Audio's right. I've had that issue before. It looks like it's good. All right, so very quickly. We pick up four 100 games. There's a, looks like there's six 200s, but they're all with wait lists for a few people. So we're gonna join those wait lists uh, while we play these 100s early on. So plenty of action early, really just have to wait a minute or two for the 200s. So stream tonight, seven hours planned. So we go until midnight Eastern Standard Time. I'll be offline tomorrow and then Sunday, first tournament stream of the year. So I'll be playing some tournaments with Scoop being here. So Scoop starts tonight. Uh, for those of you who are in Michigan, New Jersey, PA, PA or Ontario. Uh, so kind of pull up the lobby here for you guys to see. Got the scoop schedule. Um, no limit events tonight. There's a progressive knockout tournament. There's also the eight game tonight, I think. I have my lobby filter for only no limit hold'em because that's all I can play. <laughs> but uh do have Coop kicking off tonight. And then the seventh, like I said, I'll be playing. Headliners will be the $100, 125K guarantee Sunday special championship. When I try to defend my title in that from the fall series. Um, and then the biggest buy I'll be playing is the $200 second chance. So pretty pumped for that. All right. Over here at the Queen Three. So bet, and then with two flush draws, missing a weak kicker, I'm gonna check the check call here. Hopefully they've lost miss card, miss hands. This draw is what I'm trying to say. Uh, they have Ace Nine, so they had Ace High. Jack's over here. I've got a hijack open with three bet. Take it down. Hitting three bet here and a flat cut off first button. Check the flop. And then let's see, at nine on the turn. I'm gonna go ahead and over bet. These are spots I maybe make a mistake when it's like three of a suit out there. Um, River 10. River top top after we over bet. I'm gonna go ahead and check the river. It's kind of an interesting one. So I think we call as we play this here, but he can still have over pairs range for sure. Um, does have aces that time. All right, so call the ace 10, no good. Like I said, I'm not sure on that turn size on that board. Um, a lot of times we'll be going over bet on a lot of boards when it's like we check, uh, goes check check and we're out of the caller. You know, we're out of position on the turn, but I'm not 100% sure on that board. I was supposed to be one of them. Over here, tens. Check, check, flop against big blind. They leave for a dollar on the turn. We'll raise. And see the fold. Ace 10 over here. Going to raise against the limper. Get called betting here. So bet call. Heart on the turn. Maybe a turn check, I think. So check turn. Not a good river card here. Small bets we'd consider calling half pot and bigger. We'd probably just start folding. They check. We'll take the showdown. And lose the two pair on the river. Waffing river over here. Get called, unfortunately. No good versus the 10. Down a little bit early. Like I said, we got four 100 games. I'm on the wait list for six 200s. Kind of just waiting for those to uh, get kicked off. Completing the king three suit here in the small blinds. And 
and see the raise means we fold in hey what's up Tess? good to see you yes you are first again today easily first the most this year i'd have to say so far across both youtube and twitch so good to see you in here hope the day's going well all right fold there so we won't hit a rake back just i hit it like literally right at the end of the session yesterday so we have eight thousand hundred thousand points won't hit that for a few days uh won't be playing any cash next three days after this so i'll be playing i'll be offline tomorrow tournaments on sunday and then offline monday i think next week is going to be tuesday through sunday so six days next week and i'm probably going to try out six hour streams going six to midnight just a heads up um, is what i'm thinking so trying to see if maybe like the weeks i stream six days do six hours maybe days if i do weeks i do five or less maybe do seven um trying some things out and i'm going to try out the six o'clock start time as opposed to five o'clock so we'll uh just trying some things out still obviously it's still pretty new the evening thing it's been, i mean it's been about three months but still kind of getting used to trying to figure out how i want to go about it exactly so i uh, said you're on a hot streak i know it's been pretty crazy <laughs> an absolutely insane week it might be my like my best week ever in terms of buy-ins for sure for cash games i mean it's like what was it yesterday's like one it was like 1 1.9 with rake back day before 1.4 1 1.2 and then 3k it's just been like crazy 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 wish they'll be cool to see you play mtt's yeah so i'm excited for sunday it'll be good it'll be good to get in the mix i had a huge coop series in the fall if you didn't see it i was plus 40k on the series i played all 18 days of the series ran incredibly hot as you'd expect to have those kind of results um but yeah it was pretty sweet inside the lead river there see the fold i think when there's a flush out misses then four liners come in I've been starting to bet those boards a bit with like missed flush draws as well as straights and some other stuff too. So, anyways, all right, pretty good flop here. <laughs> sort of open and flop the boat, and that just take it down. Um, I did pick up a. 200 game that's just starting here so i'm gonna take that game out and then throw this one in but yeah i mean i'd definitely be a bit rusty with the tournaments i've played so that fall coop series wrapped up at the beginning of october so november december january february it's been five months since then and i think i've played i was at i was in vegas for the napt so i played a couple live tournaments there and then as far as online i've maybe played two tournament sessions in the last five months so yeah, I'm definitely going to be a bit rusty. I haven't really looked at tournament stuff <laughs> for a few hours tomorrow. A bit more for the refresh, but uh, again, not uh, not going to be necessarily in rare and form for MTTs, but I'll you know do the best I can and do some refreshing on some of the more basic stuff, right? Like trying to look at push fold stuff a little bit more. Refresh on that. Um, again, not going to make me like doing great and crushing the tournaments by doing that for a night or something, but or a day tomorrow, but. do the best we can with it uh Tess asking your confidence should be rising i mean yeah i think just naturally anytime that your results are going well confidence goes up and when it's not it goes down definitely always want to be uh, cautious though right because it's like you know again variance you don't want to be too high or too low ever on uh how things are going right try to be even at keel as much as possible Engrel, good to see you, Engrel. I did get a second 200 to throw in as well, by the way. That table's gonna go here. Uh, Jemp's asking, do you know of any good poker books? Or are they useless? So I think everybody just learns differently. I'm not like a book person for like learning. Um, so I personally am more towards like watching videos, video content. Um, but if anyone in the chat has recommendations, again, maybe let us know if you're looking for more like cash games or tournaments or maybe both you're interested in.
All right, over here, 98 suited. I think this is I open hijack. They call small blind. They're pretty short, so we're gonna bet here at the combo draw. Hit straight in the turn. Beautiful. And then just gonna go small again here in this spot. I'm being super balanced. Probably want to go half, but on some of the short stacking will be a bit less balanced. They raise. I don't think they're gonna have any folds here. We'll just get it in. Or shouldn't have many folds, I should say. So I just don't want a river to come that they don't like and then fold reverse. If King Jack, we have drawn dead. Get the straight, hit the flush as well for good measure. <laughs> and then we get aces the next hand. Uh, let's see here. Hey, what's up, Jack? Good to see you in here. Thanks for good luck wishes. So we're going to raise a limper and go multi-way to the flop here. Queen Jack 4. Bet call and going to go ahead and bet turn here as well. Let's see, one fold over to Johnny here. And you see the fold in the turn. Ah, sorry, hey there, Jack said nothing going your way today. Lost about two and a half buy-ins. I mean, sometimes you just need to call the session early, right? Like, I for me, it's a bit different with the stream, but like, I can understand playing. Like, sometimes it's just like some days just call it and then move on and regroup and hopefully have a better day the next day. Because said, hope you continue the run good. Thank you, I appreciate it. Yeah, it's been absolutely crazy, man. That's just a legendary uh, cash game run for me to hear to start the year, which is great. Well, legendary for me, you know, obviously there's people that have done way, way better. But I'm just saying for me, it's like, this is like way better than I could have hoped for. So, pretty awesome. Hold the river there. We have limp rays. We threw at the big one here with kings. See the call and go for bet here in Queen Jack three. Raise and from our position, we're just gonna get in the overpair here with the Kings. Calls it off, has Jack eight, so they got middle pair here. Queen on the turn in five river. Nice side. So Kings are good. Good turn card there because now the eight doesn't beat us either. So end up winning that one. Fair play said I might have to keep go down stakes if we keep losing. Oh, that's not fun. I mean, it's important to like, you know, obviously no one wants to have that situation come up, but it's good to like recognize if like your role's at a spot where you feel like you need to. And I mean, everybody's had to do it for, I mean, I was playing 500 for 21 and 22. And then last year after January, even, if, even though my role was still good to play there, I just like felt like given how the games were looking for me specifically, I kind of felt like it was probably best just to stick with 200. So I've been there and it's, it sucks, but Hopefully, uh, you'll start running better and we won't have to worry about it then. Alright, so Kings open, get three bets. They're a bit shorter, go for a four bet here. Their stat line's pretty tight here, so I wouldn't be four betting to go with super often. Their stat line 15, 5, and 4 over a thousand hands, so 
and they just have the aces but king's just gonna get it in i need running straight cards here or running kings and unfortunately don't get it so lose that unfortunately for us Bears it easy thus poker channel thank you i appreciate it. it's really high praise glad you enjoy the stream thank you so much i'm gonna full here where it goes limp and raise I know we're in position there, but the raise obviously inflates the pot a bit because of them limping. Got iron in here as well. What's up, Iron? Good to see you. So good evening and good luck for the session. Thank you, Iron. Appreciate you. Hopefully we can finish this cash game week off strong. This will be my last cash game stream of the week. I will be back Sunday, though, for Scoop. So I've had some people asking, when are you going to play tournaments? Or I'd like to see you play tournaments. I'll be playing on Sunday, so... Only for sure probably play like six days this year. So the next three Sundays will be three of those. So basically the Coop Sundays, both Scoop and then the fall version of the series too. Uh, but pretty excited for Sunday. It's a $100, 125k guarantee Sunday special championship. That's the event I won in the fall. And the fall is a $200 buy and I won it for 29k. So we're, uh, we're trying to defend our title. It's going to be pretty difficult to do when there's going to be over 1,200 runners. But we'll see what we can do. Let's see if we can uh, run it pure in it again. That was the one, and that was the tournament where it was like, there's 22 people left. I was second in chips, and against the chip leader, I got all in with quads versus top boat. <laughs> and they like, and they barely covered me, and I went on to win the tournament. Just like, probably one of the sicker hands I've played. And they rivered the top boat too, which is even sicker. And then obviously like the Sunday Special Championship. I mean, outside the main event, that might have been the second, the 2500 probably had a higher first place prize. That might have been the second highest first place prize of the series. I'd have been third behind the 2500 in the main. I'd have to look at some of the other ones, but so I won that tournament, and then I won the 250 Battle Royale for 15k as well. So it was just like insanity, <laughs> absolute insanity. Uh, again, I'm gonna be a bit tighter here than I have a 5% raise stat. Normally, a pier three bet though. All in opens, call the for suited, full up the flush draw. Nice, that's good to hear, Tess. Sounds like your work's paying off. Putting some work about five hours into three about pots. Finding that you're making less mistakes, that's good. Nice to see the work paying off and see that you're hitting those frequencies better. Definitely a rewarding feeling. So turn back here, return top pair with the flush draw call, river the nuts. Open for another bet here. That's, uh, we're pretty deep, so I'm not gonna be jamming. Go for the raise on the end. To the tank here and eventually calls flush is good good verse ace king so they have top two and they have the king of hearts too so pretty sick river for them four two there yeah, looks like this game's gonna break Go play our big blind, we'll drop it here. Um, heads up, get three bet when you're calling base nine. Flop coming down, king seven, three, two hearts. These are spots where I'm like really unsteady and heads up where I'm maybe supposed to be calling for small bets, but drop it for here. And get the walk, all right. 
a throw in a 200 game that we just got a seat for. It worked out perfect timing. See a button open here, defend jack seven suited, huge flop, so we flop trips. Pretty dry board, but I think we'd still have check raises. Once they check here, I'm gonna try to check raise turn. And so they check and spades going over, but we'll be going big on the end. Is it fold there? Over queen nine, big blind defense here. Go ahead and bet flop, get check raised. Two over cards with a medium club, I think, can call here. That's turn, we'll drop turn there. If anyone else on the grind tonight, let us know what you're doing. If you're playing cash games with stakes, you're playing Zoom tables, regular tables. How's your session going? Playing MTTs, any deep runs, big scores recently, anything like that? Yeah, and Tess, I think that's always an interesting thing too when you're talking about like with theory of what it'll say, but then you can see when you use different sizes, it's like very negligible difference. And then it's, it's you know, when you're using these like complex strategies that use embedding like multiple sizes and it's way harder to execute and you're more likely to make blunders, like you said, and then therefore it can actually be worse. Now, the best thing in the long term, especially like when you're trying to get to like high stakes, I'd imagine is like, you want to be able to hit those frequencies correctly and be able to use all those sizes correctly. But it's like very, very difficult to do. And bluff the turn here. River the flush. Go ahead and bet again. So this is blind versus blind limp pot. Check, check, flop. We bet turn. Bet river. See the fold. King eight suit over here. Got undergun limp. We check. We'll check the king high flop. Backdoor clubs as well. Bet's about half. We'll call. Five on the turn. And once they check, we'll go big bet river here. Trying to target a jack or maybe like a king two suited. King four suited. King six suited. Not sure what they're limping there with, but well, maybe those hands are in there. And then King Jack over here. It's caught off fold if it's a button open with three bet. Boom saying good luck and nice start to the year. Thank you, Boom. Yeah, it's been uh, better than I could have hoped for. You know, I have, every year you have high hopes going into it. If I had to have a profit goal, I would have said to hit 60K, which we're 
already slightly hit over halfway there as of right now. And we're on April 5th. So that's pace wise, we're looking good. Obviously a downswing can change things pretty quickly, but, and then, you know, or if I, you know, bust a bunch of uh, tournaments this uh, next couple Sundays, I can put a dent into it too, but very happy with the way things are looking for the moment. That's for sure. Uh, paper plates. Talk about all adjusted EVs positive. Good confidence, but it's marginal. But we'll see. Yeah, I mean, I think for for me last year, I was like basically break even, pre rake back with all an EV and dollars one for cash. And then obviously this year, I'm off to like an insanely hot start. But it's crazy how big like you know you can how many like hands you can run good for, not run as well at. And use that uh, if you haven't checked out that Prime Dope Poker Variance Calculator. I definitely recommend taking a look at it obviously like printing ev is not going to pay the bills right that's you know that's the other difficult thing and then obviously too like if you're playing on sites like stars here you can get pretty good rake back like i'm probably on pace to get about 2k a month in rake back this year so i mean that's like 24k in rake back which you know adds up so got jam stasher here as well what's up jam stasher good to see you thanks for the good luck wishes So it looks like we got another 200 seats. I'm going to drop the 100 game for. Hi, Jack Open here. We're three bet in these four suited. It's four, but I'm going to fold this one. Um, ask how many tables are playing. Four tables. Four tables of cash. I've got to set up this table. Speaking of tables. Small bet open here, call in the ace eight, queen seven two, and maybe supposed to call one here, but I'm gonna let this go. Uh, stars 500, it still runs. I don't usually have the lobby up to like necessarily see how many tables, but it's usually pretty consistently having tables. Uh, right now there's two games going. So again, this is for the US client of Michigan, New Jersey. If you're looking for a different client, I'm not sure, but at least here, that's what we've got. Hey, what's up, Mo? Good to see you. Thanks for the good luck wishes. That should be a call. I don't want to fold that. Uh, cut off over here, raise and take the jack 10. So basically, even today, seven bucks up. And Tess, I think that's, a, I mean, I not everybody's going to agree with this, but I think that's a good way to go about it is that I think like getting a really sound, simplified strategy is a great baseline to start and then like implementing things you know, slowly as you get comfortable with them and implementing some more things. All right, raise king four suited, bet flop. Turn brings the four liner. And I'm gonna place a raise of the king high flush draw. And 
Let's see the fall take down. So I think we can get anything that's not a straight or another flush out of fold there. And then if they have the straight, if they have a seven, I don't think they're gonna raise. If they have like jack ten, they or whatever the the long end of the straight was, they would probably put another bet maybe. But I wouldn't think just a seven would probably want to. We get to see the river almost always. Uh, Black asking, do you believe that solid exploitive play is bigger winner than solid GTO in the long term? I mean, it's always gonna depend on the games you're playing and the like. So I would say if you have to pick one where you're super exploitive or like closer to theory. Like, your theory is normally going to be better when you're talking, like, mid-stakes online, I would think. Like, you're going to have to have exploits. But here's the thing people have to understand. In order to exploit, you have to understand what theory is, right? <laughs> like, you can't deviate from something that you don't know what it is. So that's a huge misconception. People are like, oh, I don't need to study I don't need to study GTO. I play Live 2.5 or whatever. And like, my games, it doesn't matter. It's like, okay, yes, you're going to deviate a bit to maximize win rate. But you need to understand what the baseline is before you can deviate. And I think that's the, the biggest mistake and misunderstanding I think a lot of people have as far as like theory versus exploit. Is like exploit still requires that you understand theory because you can't exploit something that you don't know what you're exploiting. So for example, if you want to overfull because you think somebody's under bluffing, well, you need to know what the baseline is of what they should be bluffing the frequency and what you perceive that their bluffing range actually is. Um. So yeah, that's all that kind of stuff goes into it. Defend big line here. Um, call the flop queen on the turn. All half pot turn, not a good river. Holding river feels gross at top here, but I might actually on this one. Right, it's under half. We're not going to fold. Lose to the straight. Doesn't feel necessarily even that great against that size there, but we're getting a lot better price. Like if it's like three quarters, I actually would consider folding. But I think like versus like what was that like forty percent? Probably just want to call even if we're going to lose a lot of time. Again, so when they're betting small like that, yes, maybe we're a little worried that sometimes they're not bluffing as much of that size. But we're getting such a better price that we don't need to win nearly as often as say if they like pot the river. Uh, pair plate asks, do you only use three quarters bet size and three bet pots? Seems like you like the pot a lot more than three quarters. Um, so you're asking in three bet pots? I don't use on the flop. You're saying I don't think I use three quarters very often actually. So I'll be using a lot of. And I'm trying to think of like in position. I'll be using a lot of half or third, and then out of position. I guess no, out of position. I do. You're correct. So I'll use some. Uh, so I have like ten percent in a lot of these spots too. Um, but it's like very specific spots and then I'll be using out of position. I'll use three quarters. So I'll use like third half and three quarters. So like the difference of like half and three quarters is their boards where I'm like having a lower betting frequency. And then in general, it's like if it's suited or not. So basically I have like certain boards where I'm betting small a lot. And then other boards where it's like if it's an unsuited of those cards, I bet half. And if it has a flush draw out there, I bet three quarters. So yeah, I only really use it in, uh, on the flop in 3-bet pots if I'm out of position. Open Queens here, big blind defends. Go ahead and bet flop here on the king high flop. Ace on the turn. So we gotta check here, ace river. Yeah, Michael, a chat's up, Michael. Good to see you here. Hi, right, Michelle. Good to see you. Thanks for tuning in. Um, I think first half, we're going to fold here. Queens. Bet flop, check, check, turn. Decide to fold river two. Do you like the river pairing on the ace? Just makes it less likely I have an ace, but we'll still just let it go. Open flat. Call the 9 8 suited here. Check the ace, queen, two, rainbow. check here as well um i'm gonna go ahead and check river i don't hate the idea of trying to bluff now but so i just to check this down it looks like queen four is gonna be the winner Good 
good number of games running right now at the reg table 200 so we've got a total of nine games going i'm in four of them see all those there King nine suited call. We're gonna check the nine high flop here and pots it. Just gonna check call top top or top pair second kicker. Sorry, eight on the turn. Not the perfect turn. I do get a little scared when they pop the turn, but I think we still call one more. Not a good river card either. Unfortunately, I feel like this one they might bluff too, as I have a set. But it's gonna be hard to call even if I think they bluff a lot with like queen ten jack ten or not. Uh, yeah, sorry, queen ten jack ten stuff like that. But anyways, check check. They had a set. No good. Over here, turn two pair, so they open, we call, bet, flop, call. Weaker two pair, if they bet here, we're just going to be calling. If they check, we'll start going for value, though. So, bets again, call. Based on rivers we don't like, that is at the top of the list of ones we don't like. King of hearts, queen of hearts, probably the worst river cards. Um, Ace or jack wouldn't be good either, obviously, but pretty bad river. Four liner comes in, hearts come in. Question is, do I turn this into a bluff if they check? So I think I'm going to. It's going to be hard for them to call with like two pair or set even. So we could just be bluffing with the best hand, but I do think we get like better hands to fold. And I think once they check that river, a lot of times, once they bet flop and turn, a lot of people don't have, they maybe don't protect their range enough where they're going to have hands that call. Like the straight, for example, like flushes are probably just going to bet. And then like the straight, a lot of times you'll see people at least go small. So once they check there, it feels like they don't have the flush very often or the straight. And then they're just going to be folding a ton. So yes, like we could be bluffing the best hand, but I do think we get them to fold like two pairs or potentially sets. Oh, uh, that we'd be losing two, two. Raise the king man suited. See the three bet go for a call here. He says king. Two diamonds, one heart. So bets out small, go for call here. Jack on the turn. Um, it does feel a little nitty to fold turn, but not the best turn in the world here. Queen 10 comes in, less likely they're bluffing with like Jack 10, Queen Jack, and if they are, they probably bluff river a lot with that if they decide to bet turn. Uh, there are diamonds out there, so I probably want to call one more still. Uh, but if they check, we're really happy to check. Queen on the end, Ugh, it's a bad river card. So we'll probably call a lot of rivers. I don't know about this one. Uh, if he goes small, so I was trying to think if I ever jam or not. That's a bluff. And we're just going to check that was played. Just to the straight there, unfortunately. Open ace nine here, big one defends, bet flops to the fold. I probably should have blocked over here actually. Best play move check call. So limp hot checks through flop checks through turn. And just checks down. We're good. Queen 10 suit over here. So we've got limp, raise it up. So 
So let's see. Let's see the call. We're gonna go and check here on eight eight four. Turn the ten into spade. We'll go small in the turn. And see the fold. Good luck on the grind, Michelle. I said it right. That was the way I said it correctly. I think that I said it, I said Michael first. I said Michelle, but either way, I believe Michelle was correct. Um, but yeah, good to see you in here. Thank you for the good luck wishes. I'm usually pretty bad with name pronunciation, so I try my best to remember what people tell me, but I'm usually pretty poor with it. All right, ready to take the jacks there on the small blinds. As a reminder, next week I'll post a schedule on Sunday, like officially, but I'm pretty sure it's going to look like Tuesday through Saturday, cash games 6 to midnight. So I'm going to start doing a starting an hour later. I'm kind of between the idea of like six to seven hour streams and it might just change from week to week, but always start at the same time. So more or less do like six hour streams if I'm streaming like six days in the week, but if I'm streaming like five, maybe do seven or something, but kind of trying things out still. Uh, but next week, the cash game streams will start an hour later than they have been. Um, so I'm going to try it out that next week and then the scoop tournaments on Sunday. So, and then remember this week we have, uh, I still have one more stream this week. I'll be offline tomorrow, but back on Sunday for Scoop. Uh, Marcus Askey, straight up folded sevens versus under the gun. Depends on the position of the table, but yeah, if I'm anywhere but the button or the big blind. So I play a three better fold strategy from the hijack cutoff and small blinds. So if somebody opens in front, um, if we're not doing any flat, we have to be a bit tighter with our continue range. So hands like those middling pairs, particularly against like an under the gun open, our range can tighten up pretty significantly sometimes um, if we're playing that strategy. Are you asked how many tables you play? Four tables. Hijack open here, three button king queen. So three bet call, queen eight, three, two hearts. One half pot here. And then six on the turn. Uh, I'm gonna go check the heart turn. Eight river, it's a pretty bad river card. I might actually even just check the river too. If we face bet, we're most likely calling unless they go over bet, which they honestly couldn't have spot. It's a really bad run out for us. But if we get checked too, I think we just check down and win most of the time. So yeah, I can just jacks. Most likely good, but I do think it's hard to get worse to call there. Um, On the run out there, given that they call the flop bet for half. Here we're in open eights down at this table. The open eights get called, check back, jack on the turn. And I'm going to call one here. Hit a set, four liner comes in. Both sizes we would just call. I'm trying to think if I'd ever consider raising against the block size or not. And if they check, we'll go for the bet. So rare in the chat, up so rare, good to see ya. Welcome in tonight. And you see the fold there, the eights. Place and bluffing with two pair, fancy. Yeah, you don't get to do that very often, but it's fun when you find a spot to do it and it gets through. Oh, 
Hold the king nine, three best suited, fold off suit there. So currently down about 40 bucks today, nothing too wild. Got the four 200 games going. I'll be streaming for seven hours tonight. So we're about 45 minutes in or so. So pretty early still. Hopefully finish off this uh, legendary cash game week and then take that momentum into the MTT streets on Sunday. I'll be starting that at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, starting a little bit earlier than a lot of my cash game streams start. Got the uh, the Coop events, so I'm going to be firing, getting online as soon as the first one of the day starts. So there's two of them that start at 4, so we got the $100 high and the $10 low of this uh, progressive knockout Sunday warm-up. And then the, I think the, the marathon will probably still be running too. So like that starts at two and usually has at least three hours of late reg. So that's not an official coupe event, but it'll be on the schedule along with some other events. So we'll, we'll have a decent amount of tables right away. So I got to make sure I, one thing I do have to make sure is I keep table space though for uh, all the, uh, the coupe events. I don't want to be missing one that I want to play because I'm playing some side event instead. I will keep it in mind. So over here, 10's player leads for two. We'll just call nine in the turn. Check turn, six river, either calling or betting most likely. So go for the bet here, see the fold. Limp pot over here, we've got button limp. We just check flop middle pair, backdoor straight draw, turn two pair, nice. Go ahead and bet turn here, call, not nice river. Four liner comes in as well. So I don't think, sometimes we'll block like two pairs in these spots. I don't think when there's a four liner and the spades though. Probably would be folding, honestly, unless they go really small and think about it. But first half, I'm just going to fold there. Only one of the draws comes in, potentially call, but I don't think, or even block myself. I don't think when they both get there, I want to continue now. So we got open three bets. Turn the four bet here. So back over the original opener. Oh, in the tank quite a bit here. Hopefully just like rips in like queens here, jacks here. Would be the best case scenario. Way into the tank. I have to guess just has like another table here. I mean, it is a topper pre-flop spot, but. Going pretty deep in the tank. Eventually folds. Over here, 7-6-2, we're an open button, big blind, three bets decide to flat here, and we flat bottom pair. And against half, I think want to call, but not like super thrilled about it. Nine turns, interesting. Um, I think 8-7, I would turn into a bluff. I do have a gut shot too, I guess, actually. Um, I'm just trying to think if I want to turn this into a bluff or not. Thinking about it. I think I'm actually going to. It is a little interesting that they're tanking here on the flop. So I'm going to turn into a bluff. I'm not sure I'm going to absolutely love this, though. I think I'm going to jam any river here, just about. By river a six, I might check. By river a seven, I'll probably go for value. Anyways, we can see the fold.
It was probably good to see it. Yeah, yesterday's session ended up good. I, was, I can't remember the exact number. I want to say it was like 18, 1900 with the rake back chest. About. But yeah, it was a good day. Uh, KJ asks, how much is your rake back? So on Stars US, you get between 15 and 33%. Depending on what rake back chest you clear, what tier you have. So I have the top tier black chest. Has nothing to do with my PokerStar sponsorship deal. I just play plenty of uh, volume at mid stakes to hit it very easily. So... I get 33%. So basically every time I rake $1,000, I get $330 worth of cash or coins. I always just straight turn the coins into cash. You can buy stuff in the store with them and stuff, but I just take the rake back in cash. All right, check, check, flop here. King on the turn. Right back turn. I'm going to the tank here. Now yeah, we see the fold. Predictions talk about the schedule. Um, so it's like a good one to try, good playing times plus more flexibility or some flexibility week to week, day to day. Yeah, exactly. So it's like the uh, this like the tough thing was like the five o'clock is it because I like a big part of like you know with streaming and stuff is you try to like have the biggest viewership you have. It's you know growing your stream, having the most watch hours, stuff like that. So um, five can be kind of hit or miss depending on what other what European streamers are on, right? Like some of them are still wrapping up their sessions. Um, stuff like that some days it like does really good right away and other days it takes you know maybe like two three hours really for things to pick up so um here gonna bet river that'd be nuts so check check flop bet turn bet river but yeah so anyways and then the flexibility too of like if i i'll just say like six to twelve and if i want to do the seven hours we can that's just like an extra but then like have the six to twelve be the core and then like you said a little more flexibility as far as like some days i'll do six some days seven it'd probably be like more dependent um and we're good versus two pair nice you jacks go there um good versus top two six sick turn card but yeah so it's uh you know just kind of depend how i'm uh you know things set up for like the next day of how early i want to get to bed if i have something to do early next day or um, you know, if the games are good, how fresh I'm feeling at the six hour mark, stuff like that. Button opens here, three bet and tens to the fold. But then also, like I said, it'll be partly just dependent. Like there'll be sometimes I'll probably just schedule seven hours, but particularly if it's a week where I'm only playing five days or something, maybe. Um, so like keep that in mind too. Dean asks, is your, uh, 2024 include rake back? Yes. So I think I am up like 24k on the tables. I think it's about 7k of the 31.5's rake back, roughly. Open ace king here, big blind defense. We're gonna bet flop here, top top. And at turn four. Go ahead bet turn. And take it on down. Here we go, button on the gun, button three bets. We flop the second nuts. Really good start. And I think we're gonna go for a check raise here. And then seven turn. Half pot turn. And six in the river. So great run out here. We've got 155 back, 197 in the middle. Just gonna be jamming. Going for it all here. Man, see the snap. We'll take it on the King Jack there.
Over here, we bet turn to two people after bet and flop. And just see the fold. It's up, Jack and C in here. Ace Queen suited. What was the uh, full Ace Queen? What was a hand that I had somebody fold on? That's me. I'm trying to remember. Oh, pre flop, I had kings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good fold then. That's a tough one. Small one opens here through at the ace king. Yeah, those, those spots are, can be really tricky. But good fold. Jazz asks, you're planning to return to 500 NL. Not anytime soon. Uh, just kind of continuing to grind it out here. Last year's results weren't very good with 200 even. This year, obviously, we're off to like a blazing hot start. But um, just kind of continue grinding. In this pool, too, it's a pretty big jump to 500 at the moment. Given that, uh, like, all the high stakes regs, or most of them will be playing 500, like, that's their lowest stake. So you go from not facing them to facing them in those games. The biggest benefit of, like, getting to 500 would be is, like, if I can be winning at 500 and then, like, then play the 1K, 2K games when they run because they'd be pretty similar, like, ability level. Um, but it's a pretty big jump from 200 to 500. Three bet King Queen suited pre get called bet flop here. Take it down. Over here, Jack 10, we open button, big blind defends. And just gonna check river. So they bet turn, we call up there. for a value but over here on the river called and value on ourselves against the set unfortunately i think that was blind versus blinds bets flop we call checks the turn we bet then river decided to go for value and value on ourselves on the end Play asked you to invest your money at all. I was thinking about putting a majority of my bank on money market account to grow so it's not just sitting there. So I don't. I'm so I have like my retirement account, right? So I put in like I max that out for whatever it is for I'm gonna maybe use the wrong term, the 401k, like the IRA account. So like I think this year you're allowed to put in up to 6700 as like self-employed. So like I'll max that out at the beginning of the year. Uh, but other than that, like I don't put any money in the market, like it just sits in the bank. <laughs> Which there's gonna be some people that advocate for that being bad because obviously you're losing money to inflation for a few percentage points or whatever um so for me the way i look at it is like a i'm i'm extremely risk adverse when i feel like i i'm not knowledgeable about something um or like i'm not the one making decisions so like when it goes into like stocks and stuff like i just i literally know nothing right and yes i can give it to people that know stuff but i'm always like concerned of like <laughs> what what do they know how knowledgeable actually are they what's the market actually gonna do like i'm too paranoid about it like i just it'd be hard also with like poker like i feel like and just like with my career in general, I'm trying to be extremely cash heavy. I mean, again, I don't need to be going to the extreme I am where like a lot of my, you know, is in banks, right? Obviously, I'm not like sitting here with cash in my apartment. That'd be stupid, but um, like in banks. Um, and yes, like I understand that, yeah, you're losing money to inflation or whatever, but um, I'm just like extremely risk off with a lot of things. Cause like that's the thing I would worry about, right? Let's say I'm just gonna throw out a hypothetical, right? Like you put money in a market account, goes way down, and you need to and your bank rolls taking a hit at the same time. You know, so that's how I look at it. And especially too with my career, like it's just like there's not as much stability, right? So I'm a full time poker streamer, right? So my career is kind of into two. So there's the content and streaming side. It's hard to know how much money I'm gonna make through that. It could go extremely well or go away tomorrow. Like you just you know, you never know, something could happen. Um and then the same thing with the poker side, right? Like it's it's hard to know how much money I'm going to make from the playing side year to year. Um, so basically, like, these last really four years since COVID hit. So, like, when I had... I still had a full-time job for, like, that next year and a half. But, like, my, my spending was way down during that because you just couldn't go out and do anything. I didn't do it, you know? Um, and I've just been, like, saving. I mean, I pay my taxes every year. And other than that, I just save a ton of money. I haven't made, like, any big purchases or big investments. Just kind of, like, I guess more or less hoarding my money and... Uh, that way, like, if, you know, something, you know, goes away tomorrow, I'm, like, really well set and, like, don't have to stress over anything and, like, still good to figure out the next move and, you know, kind of go from there. And 
again it's just like it's with the streaming and poker like i said both of like it's just hard for me to really gauge you know how long i'll be like doing this and i'm not worried about like being able to get another job if i like would you know have to transition out of this at some point whether it's tomorrow or 10 15 years down the road or 20 or never or whatever but uh you know it's just really like volatile as far as what i can maybe expect it's again it's just like really unpredictable so i think there's tons of upside of what i'm doing um but it's just uh like things are going really well right now but it's hard to know long term so i basically all that to say is i basically am trying to stay like extremely liquid not make huge investments especially if they're like long-term investments where you want to really let it sit there instead of like potentially taking it out in a couple months or whatever so pretty boring but uh, it's kind of the route i've gone a lot over these last four years is more or less just like hoarding money and uh you know having it sit in banks all right so my bet flop here turn six besides the lead here i think we want to raise this and i think we raise pretty big If we get called, I would probably check a Heart River. Otherwise, jam a lot if we're not too deep there. Anyways, we raise, take it down. Uh, tens here, jacks the other two as well. Hey, what's up, Kirjan? Good to see you. Thanks for good luck wishes. Jumping over here, jacks. We're going to open our the gun, small line three. That's just going to call in position here. Flop the gut shot. Checks to me, happy to check. Two on the turn. Either calling or checking here against bets most of the time. So it goes for bet, we'll call. There could be some interesting rivers here. If it's a spade and he bets, I might bluff jam. Oh, geez, there it is. <laughs> I think we're probably going to. If he checks, we'll just take the showdown, but end up good for 7 6. But I was going to say, if he ends up betting river there, I think we're pulling the big bluff there. Queens of the spade, jacks of the spade, probably be our bluffs we use the most often. Uh, maybe like 10 jack. Oh, I guess I don't have 10 jack offsuit, so in range there. But yeah, those are the type of hands we're looking at. Hit a set over here. So bet flop, check turn, a river the 10. Queen jack comes in as well, but obviously feeling pretty good. They won't have kings in range, defending big blind here against an open. So effectively the second nuts. And it gets over bets. This is really nitty to just call, but I'm trying to think what my raise size would be if I raise. I'm just going to call here. We need for the bluff. We're good. So, again, it's effectively a second nuts, but they have to have, they'd have to be betting like set of nines to call if I raised, which maybe, but it's probably be a higher frequency of like Queen Jack that we probably own ourselves against. So, anyways, against Oberbite, I decided to make a tight just call there. Kings over here, open, three bet, cold four from the button, and uh, it's gonna be strong, but we're all in chat. This is a very strong formation. We're gonna be all in here. Back to the button. Hopefully calls like queens or jacks, race king. No snap calls, a good start, no aces. <laughs> and then uh, take it down. Uh, visit asking what's your best and worst cash games session on your stream in your career um i want to say we had a win of almost 5k and i think the loss was about like i can't remember if it was like for some reason the the 0.8 number stands out like 3.8 or 4.8 i can't remember which one it was but something like that That's it already at one dollar per hand if we can keep it up we're a little bit below now but yeah it's a tough trend to keep up i mean we've been doing it a lot lately so maybe i shouldn't say like impossible
Nice, Ghost. Good to hear that. So I employed some of the strategy I watched from you and won 700 bucks in two hours playing 2-5 the casino. Very nice. Congrats on the win. Glad to see that the time uh, watching the stream and using it as some studies paying off there for you. <laughs> Saucy said that bad, just stupid. Throwing a mutual fund. Yeah, I mean, it's just like... I mean, to be fair, like, I'm just, like, very untrusting with... <laughs> I can be a control freak with my own stuff. So like like example I can give is that like, it took me forever to finally hire an editor for YouTube when like I probably should have done a long time ago. I just like, I'm very particular about what I want and how I want it set up. Um, and then like with my own money, like the problem I have is that, again, I know nothing about markets at all. And I literally have no interest in learning about it. Like it's just not something I have any interest in. So like putting in a chunk of my money where something could go bad and I have like no control over it is just, uh, scary to me so i kind of stay away from it but again like if you're looking at it from a probability standpoint of like it's more likely to go good than bad or whatever then like if from a poker side of like if you think like a poker player um here against pretty big size all right i'm gonna hijack i'm just gonna flat this we flop top set so i decided to just flat versus the four bat i maybe should have jammed this the bigger the size they go the more jam we want to do it is under gun and hijack though so Player stat line 17, 13, 7 over 400 hands, so not really a huge sample. They bet with this call here. And then nine of spades turn. If they check, we'll jam top set. Sometimes we would check back and trap, but I think double flush draw, we want to jam here. Uh, we're going to have some bluffs that want to jam. Nice to have some value in here too. Make sure we get the value in as well. So checks and then like i said sometimes we would check here but i think on this one we're gonna want to jam it is tough because i block like top pairs but i'm hoping that like jacks or tens might call There's, like two flush draws out there on top as well as like aces and kings that sometimes check here so it's aces and we do hold <laughs> sick and just running good chat running good uh king jack over here button opens we three back get called bet small on the flop call check in the three turn And then face a big bet turn. Um, we're deeper. Okay, so I'm just going to call the turn. Three on the end check. So ace jack would be better than king jack probably just because king blocks more missed straight draws here. We're pretty deep. I wouldn't be shocked if he just goes like super polar and considers jamming. It's tough in my spot because I do get a little bit worried I'm going to be folding a ton. It becomes a good spot for just going nuts with. Uh, decides about half. All right, how do I want to perceive this? So with how deep we are, he could have some queens flats. Um, maybe ace jack, obviously. A couple different straight draws miss. 8, 7, 10, 9. Does he bluff big with those or use the smaller size, though? Uh, it feels kind of tight to fold this. I think I'm going to fold king jack, call ace jack here. Ace King suited to turn the nuts to the fold. Feels a little tight with the King Jack fold, but. Uh, Mac, so I do have like a certain, I don't remember the exact percent I get, but I do get a higher percent with the certain savings account that I've set up. It might not be the 4%, I don't think it's that high, but it's a uh, count that gets a little bit more than usual through where I'm banking at for my personal account. Oh, yes, sir. So you should throw the money into an HYSA. It might be similar to kind of what. The, uh, so zero Mac, what you're saving about, or what you're talking about with the, uh, where is it? I just lost the name of it. E-Trade Savings Account. Is it FDIC insured or no? Because it's not, I wouldn't want to deal with it. I know there's like such a low likelihood of anything happening, but that's my biggest thing. <laughs> so if it's FDIC insured, the, the savings account, I know like normal E-Trade accounts aren't, but if that is, that's different. But if it's 4% and it's not FDIC insured, I would never want to do that. Or just the extra little bit. I'm too paranoid. <laughs> like I said, I know it ends up like cost me a little bit, but 
peace of mind to me is worth a lot. Like I'll overpay for like um comfort if it makes sense or like basically miss out on a little bit of value for comfort when it comes to stuff sometimes uh jam said that red dan harrington say wsop back in the 2000s for americans municipal bonds are the best and safe investment yeah I, I have no idea i couldn't even tell you what a municipal bond is to be honest i've heard the name but i have no idea like i said i'm extremely uneducated about markets and stuff honestly i probably should at least know more than i do Is King over here going to be opening up small blinds? Take it down. nine here button opens we defend so it depends on the size if i would ever check raise i would maybe against third against half pot and bigger but we would always just call this even queen nine against third i might just call more check raises like ace nine king nine at a higher frequency so yeah i'm just gonna go ahead and call here and jack on the turn check double try so i gotta go yeah different time zones hey, i appreciate you hanging out here while you can always good to see you in here enjoy the rest of the day uh, turn, I'm gonna go ahead and call here. Ace on the river check. The turn, I actually maybe should fold that, but I'm gonna lose on the jack 10. I'm not 100% sure on that jack, or the queen nine call against over bet. Favorite plate, I I can't remember the full hand. I remember there was a spot I lost a pot to when you had a set. I'm trying to remember what I had in hand and what the action was. I remember it recently, but I don't remember the exact uh, layout of the hand at all. It's amazing how many things you have to remember for poker and then you can forget a hand that happened five minutes ago. <laughs> Mind remembers what it wants to remember, I guess. Limp pot over here, button limps, we check, we're gonna flop two pair, we're gonna try to go for the check raise. And then king on the turn, I'm just gonna go ahead over about turn here. Get raised min. I think we just call here and then call most river sizes. check we're gonna be good honestly mostly just worry about like king seven king six mostly they have queen ten so we're good yeah they didn't bet flop there i guess with the king turn i would have shut things down but ace queen oh we're gonna be a fold here is king over here. So we three bet get called. Over 10% on the flop here. And then 
then a beauty of a turn. These are spots I've been meaning to check to see what I'm supposed to use. I've been going a lot of small sizes of position here. I'm not sure this is correct when betting. And then if we bet river, bet big. This spot, I'm not sure if I'm playing right. And eventually this folds. Patrick in the chat asks, would you recommend the same, oh, your same bet sizings for like 10 or 9 games in a live, like 10 or 9 handed? Um, I, I'm trying to think. So I would use these sizes when I'm playing. I don't know if maybe there's a better, a bit of an exploit for different live lineups that maybe you should be using. If anything, maybe you can get away with like playing a bit unbalanced with your sizings a bit more, particularly if like, let's say you're, I think it's a bit different if you're like, say traveling to Vegas um, to play for a week or if it's like at your home room where you play a lot. So if you're playing against someone you won't play against very often, I actually think there's probably merits for being unbalanced with your bet sizings. Um, you don't want to use size that like nobody will use, but if it's a spot where it's like, hey, maybe I usually use half, but some people do use over bet here or something like it's maybe not a good example. Like say that's the concept and you have a value hand then maybe over bet a little bit more. So, you know, and I'm talking with like one, two, two, five, right? I'm not talking necessarily high stakes live, but I'm talking about like in general where it's like, okay, they might not understand that I'm not balanced using the size. So I think that would be like a, something different I would maybe do if I'm like really on top of it and feel like I can. Usually what I do though, is I just like play my same size and play consistent. What I'm used to, I play so little live these days. Maybe a little exploited with them against some people, but not like too out of line really. Pots the river here, full the queen. And Paulo in here saying hello from Italy. Paulo, good to see ya. Raise the limper here, get called, we flop top two. And then not the best turn of the world. They're both a little bit shorter. This player leads. As long as Johnny Big Rig doesn't jam. Actually, versus Johnny, we might still just get it in, to be honest. We don't have to worry about this player. There's two different straight draws that come in. This player is not much more behind. We're just gonna get in the Queen 10. If they have a straight, hopefully get there. If they have a set, hopefully get there. But I, this doesn't feel very good, but I think against a short stack, we're just gonna get this in. As ace king, all right, we're way ahead, and we do hold nice. Queen ten, getting the job done. That puts us at plus six ten. They were up three buy-ins again. Oh my gosh, chat! It's crazy, 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 crazy. Uh, enter. I don't know what that a DCA and an S and. I don't know what DCA is, sorry. What is a DCA? Like I said, I, you guys have to remember, I am like literally clueless when it comes to markets and such. Jackson got to risk it for the biscuit, just do smart investing. But that's the problem. I'm not smart enough with the knowledge of markets to do the smart investing. And I'm not very trustworthy with my money. So Jack, I do have an account, yeah, a retirement account, yeah, yeah, with them. But it's like that's capped on how much you can put in for the year, and then like that's where you you, have, you can't pull it out till you're like fifty nine or whatever, fifty nine and a half, whatever that number is. So yeah, I do that every year. Like I cap out what you can do is like a self, like a personal account or whatever. So I think this year was like sixty seven hundred. So I do that at the beginning of the year and just get it capped. Uh, zero said it's up to like a million or 100k. Oh, interesting. FDIC. So it's FDIC insured. The, uh, what do you call it? I already forgot. The E Trade savings account.
that said peace of mind has no price for me and yeah and i mean like i said there's definitely times like if that's like a, if it's literally a savings account that's like fdc insured like it definitely makes sense for me to look at it right especially if there's no like restrictions on pulling it out like anytime you want to but yeah like in general i just like again i know like the ev of it i'm missing out on some money but just the thought of like something could be a complete disaster and like things fall apart and i just like to be over something i know nothing about like my peace of mind would just be <laughs> i'd be too stressed Again, I know it's probably not the best mathematical way to look at it, but if I'm just being honest, I do have emotions when it comes to my money when it's something I have no control over, which might sound funny being a poker player because obviously you don't have control over what happens as far as running good or bad, but I at least feel better about it than I would because I'm more knowledgeable about how poker works in the swings than I am about the markets. Uh, this so there's different things the tax code in the u.s it just depends on there's some things you get tax forms for and some you don't you're supposed to report all your earnings so like i report every single line of what i get so some you'll get tax forms for though and some you won't i don't know exactly what triggers everything but All right, call here to on the turn check. And then two on the river. I'm gonna bluff small here. Can't see the fold, perfect. Oh, interesting, zero cool. So you're saying that each area premium savings is FDIC insured up to 500K. Okay, I mean, yeah, I guess I would have. I'll have to actually look into that then. Cause that's the only thing I care about is that it's FDIC insured. Like you're getting 4%, that's gonna be better. Like I said, I know I'm getting a bit higher than normal with like the specific savings account I have set up now, but I am very confident it's not 4% high. Uh, Todd, so I have a, a sole proprietor, uh, LLC set up for the business. Yeah, for all my content and poker stuff all combines. Good to see you, Maguario. So I see you're already printing money early in the session. We're trying to. Oops, I just bumped the computer. Trying to keep the session going. The insane run, I should say. But yeah, so far so good today. Random meme said you're doing amazing. Keep it up, champ, and learn so much from watching. Thank you. I appreciate it. It's a little bit more full. Let's go through the stacks real quick. We got 218, 307, 504, 296. Uh, Tess said the ace king where he turned the nuts with the flush. It was an overbet on the four diamond cards. Oh, interesting. That threw that pot where I went small. So I'm guessing then it wants to do like really low frequency betting and then your value, you're basically just repping the king or nothing. Maybe the queen then too. Like nuts or second nut diamonds. And then check. So those would be your two value hands. Maybe it's just the king. And then find a low frequency of bluffing to balance it out. Interesting. Yeah, that's, that's a spot I've been meaning to get into a little bit more.
All right, Ace Nine suit over here. Uh, so sorry, Lost. Asking who's better between Paige Backers and Caitlin Clark. And also, I think Iowa UConn wins. I have no idea to be honest. I've seen like highlight clips of both. I've never actually watched a full game. I don't know if I've ever watched a quarter of a game to be honest. But I know a lot of people are excited. And, like a lot of people watched the tournament and said they've been really good games. But I would just be making up an answer. I don't know. From the, what I can get the gist of when I've been listening to them throughout their careers, it seems like they're both like pretty incredible. Caitlin Clark maybe gets more like fanfare. I looked at their stat lines though, like um, just like you can like Google search stat lines and like Paige Becker's efficiency is like off the charts. Like she's shooting like over 50% from the field, like her whole career it looks like, which is insane for a guard. I think they're both pretty high with assist numbers too. And then obviously like, you know, but I don't, I've never, like I said, I've never actually watched either play. I've just seen like highlight clips, but it sounds like they're both like really good. It should be a fun matchup. It's tonight, so I won't be watching it, but. I think it starts soon, doesn't it? I think the first game is at seven. I don't know if it's that game or the other game, but. Uh, Crumb said, I got, I received a notice in the mail today. You're nominated for poker stream of 2024. What was that from? I don't know if you're trolling me or if you're saying you actually got something regarding this. That seems like a weird thing to come in the mail. So I feel like it's a, uh, you may be trolling, but I have, I've not heard about this if you, so if you're being serious, you have to give me more information about it. I know the last couple years they have like that, uh, the global poker awards, so they do like three rounds of voting. It's so, like they have like, they have a first round where it's like people are on the ballot. Then they have like a second or they have two rounds. Sorry. So it's like they have no, maybe it's three. They have like a list of like X amount of people for every category. And then, and it can be like quite a bit, right? Like I think maybe it's like 40 streamers or something like that. Then it gets narrowed down to like eight or nine. And then they have, then they vote it down to like a final four for like the finalists that like actually at the awards and then they have a winner. So the last two years I've been on like that initial one. Because I've, like, seen the list of, like, 40 or whatever, but I've never made, like, the final, like, 8 or 9 or whatever, the step before even the final, like, the semi-final, I guess you'd say. Zero cool nugget. I'll definitely have to look into that. Thanks for letting me know about it. The uh, the E-Trade account, that's, I mean, like I said, if it's FDIC insured and it's a savings account, there's, like, no restrictions. And like you said, it's not like it's money I'm... It's money I literally just have sitting in an account <laughs> doing nothing for a long time, so... That would be good to get, even if it's just a little bit extra, right? And it actually would add up quite a bit, yeah. Junior asks, what's the perfect starting bankroll for 200 NL? My friend is Zoom 200 winnable. Uh, is 200 Zoom winnable? So I do not play in the Zoom pools. I would have to assume people are winning, right? Like, I don't have data to back it up. I don't have friends that play in the pool. I can't imagine the pool would run if nobody was winning. So yes, I'd have to imagine it's winnable. Obviously, it depends on your skill ability, right? That's what it comes down to. But um, as far as what was the first uh, perfect, so perfect obviously is just have infinite bankroll, right? If you're asking like what your requirement should be, it depends if you're playing for a living, close to going pro, or if you're playing recreationally. So if you're a pro or close to going pro, I always say 100 minimum buy-ins to sit in an online cash game plus six months living expenses at the absolute minimum. Other factors you'd want to consider is if you, what your expenses are. Uh, what you perceive as your win rate is going to be. Um, if you have like a wife and kids at home, if you don't, you know, what your expenses are, like all that plays a huge factor. If you're recreational, it really just up to your pay risk tolerance and like how important the money is to you. And if you're willing to redeposit money or if you're not, the biggest thing is just make sure you're playing with money that if you lose, it's okay. Like again, poker should be a fun game. You never want to get to the point where you're playing for money that has a negative impact on your life, right? We got open, threw at tens here, take down. 
Uh, Pedro asks, what did you do for your previous full-time job? So I worked in data for about five, the five years before. So I graduated from college about seven or eight months. I worked at an insurance agency selling insurance and doing some more like uh, customer service type stuff. Just wasn't for me. Like I just, I don't have the personality type for a salesman. I just like, it's just not my thing. Not something I enjoyed. Uh, so I transitioned to working in data, which was a lot better for me. I still never like was passionate about what I did, but I didn't like dread it at all. And you know, it was fine. So the, for four years, I worked at a manufacturing company. And then for uh, the last year I worked at a, um, with a medical board. And then I eventually started streaming full time, September, 2021. So it's been about two and a half years. I've been, uh, having poke streaming poker be my living, which is still insane to me. <laughs> I just like, I'm very grateful for it. Cause it's just like, I, for a very long time, like I kind of had just accepted and expected that I would never have a job that I was passionate about. Thought about it was really sad, but like I just didn't feel like it was, you know. I felt like it was just like, all right, I'll just, I gotta find a job that I like I don't hate and that can make solid money at, and like the rest of my life will be good, right? So I worked like eight to five with a lunch hour. Very rarely worked overtime. Like basically never worked on weekends. And it's like, I was like, eh, you know, it's just how it's going to be. And I make the rest of my life good. And then once I started streaming poker, I was like, wow, I know there's people who do this for a living. If I could do this, I could actually enjoy what I do, <laughs> which I never even thought would be something that would ever happen to me. And then now it's kind of turned to this. So I'm, I'm definitely very grateful for it and really enjoy it a lot. Been uh, quite the whirlwind. I still sometimes think back to how crazy I would think like a couple years ago, what I'm doing now is <laughs> like how awesome I'd, I'd be. And I'd be like, what? no way it actually worked out <laughs> but yeah it's pretty awesome laughed asked you play live pretty rarely these days don't love bluffing this space but i do have a king here so i'm gonna use it not sure this is great and we get called no good versus jack five like i said i'm not sure i like that bluff with a spade uh, with the spade sorry Maybe not ideal. Uh, Carbs said, just was talking about the stream. We say it's a great stream, fun here in the commentary. Never a dull moment. Keep it up. Thank you. I do appreciate it. As I say, the only like awards I'm aware of that they even do for poker streamers is the the GPI stuff. And like I said, I've seen like the list. Like I, I'll make the like initial cut of like like that's like 40 or 50 people maybe. It's a lot of people. Um, like the first cut, the last two years. But then like when it gets cut down to like the final eight or nine, I haven't been on that list yet. And then obviously not a finals off for that either. Uh, predictions talk about the women's tournament tonight. Said so South Carolina's a seven, and then Iowa, UConn's at nine thirty. Gotcha. So Iowa's a three and a half point favorite. Okay, so small favorite. Um, Aaron mentioned that there's a Marcus Savings account by Goldman Sachs that gets four point four percent. I might have to look into this a little bit more. But I've always just gone through like a national bank chain. But, you know, again, if it's like, again, the thing I care about is that's FDIC insured for all of it. And then I can take it out whenever I want. Other than that, it's like, I don't really care. Because if, <laughs> at the end of the day, like if, because sometimes people are like, oh, the FDIC, they could, like, go out, you know, go against, like, the government can literally do anything they want, obviously, right? So it's like, they could be like, oh, they want payouts. Like, we have way bigger problems if the government's, if all these banks go under and the FDIC doesn't get paid out. <laughs> Everybody's in trouble. <laughs> Open three bet. We're gonna put the four right here with aces. So see the call. I'm gonna go ahead and check here against Johnny. I'm gonna try to set this trap here. Owen for the trap. I thought about betting small and checking turn, but decide to start checking the flop. So bet's half, we're just gonna tank call here, and then I'm going to any turn. I just don't want to see a queen really, but 
check again. That's 28. I think we jam now. But it's like this little behind. And calls Queen Jack with a club draw. Oh, he gets there. Oh, we try to trap Johnny, and unfortunately, the run out is unkind to us. Run out unkind. Alright, so we lose that. That was still about 436 today, though. So yeah, I guess talking about like the I think the streamers that got nominated this year it was uh Draft, Lex, Spraggy, and Kevin Martin, I think were the four finalists, and then Draft won it. I've never been like a huge fan of like having like a voting system for <laughs> like streamer of the year. Cause like to me it's just like you just look at who has the most watched hours. Again, I don't think the data I don't know anywhere that has like data public on YouTube now that people are multi-streaming, but at least on Twitch, like you can find the data online. So I've never understood like the voting aspect for that, but but obviously like those uh, those guys all have massive followings and huge viewership, really good streams. Uh, Double D asking, can I send it or see the hand history when I play with play money? I would assume yes, but I'm not 100% sure. So I would assume what you would probably do here is you would click this little, if you can see the arrow towards the top, not quite the top left corner, like the table. Uh, you would click this and it should show you the hand replayer. I'm not sure if it doesn't play money. My guess is it probably does though. Uh, Jerry Mafia asked, uh, will you ever move up stakes or are you comfortable here? So, I mean, the goal is definitely, like, as I, you know, things go on and, like, get better, player higher stakes and such. Like I said, the, the specific setup right now is that a lot of the high stakes reg... In, the, in this market, it's going to be a lot of guys are playing, like, 500 to 2K or 500 to 5K. Whereas in, like, some other markets, like the dot-com pools, you'll have more of, like... People won't play that wide of a range a lot of times. A lot of times, like, guys that are playing 2K will just play 2K because there's enough games running, right? Or they'll just play 1K. So like the the most likely scenario I could see is like let's just say there was all of a sudden like several new states that came in and then there was 1K and 2K games running more often and then you there's enough of those games that those guys that are high stakes regs don't bother playing 500 because they have enough uh, games at 1K and 2K then the 500 games could become even more appealing to me um, but we'll just have to see how it plays out and how my win rate does throughout the year and stuff. Cutoff opens we defend at flop top two on a pretty wet board here. Maybe supposed to go for the bigger raise size, but we back call. Go for a turn barrel here as well. Maybe should size up a little bit. The over bet, but go ahead and bet turn. Paul's perfect run out here. We jam for value. Going all in at the top two. see the fold here at the queen jack suit we're gonna raise against the limp calls and go ahead and bet turn as well and get the turn fold Uh, DRG said, don't get into any beef with another US streamer. Oh, I, I don't have any beef with any streamers. So I'm good. <laughs> I have no desire to. And, and genuinely, like, all the streamers I've met or talked to have been really nice. Like, that's been one of the cool things. Like, you never know, right? Like, that's, like, how you'll mesh with different people or, you know, if you like people. But, like, literally every streamer I've ever talked to or been in person with, like, everyone's been pleasant, which has been pretty cool. It's one aspect of the community I've really enjoyed. 
um getting to know people whether they're other star streamers or like at different events and stuff um i've really enjoyed like interactions with everybody so yeah no beef here i mean to be fair like it's probably isn't a surprise to you guys that watch my personality is not really to have beef with people <laughs> so um i can't see that happening anyways but no i don't have any beef with any streamers we're no beefs here uh laughed with the prime sub thanks so much laughter i do appreciate the support there on the prime sub Alan said, went to college and grad school thinking I wanted to do one thing, but now I have my own business to play poker and supplement life instead. Yeah, and exactly. Like, it's just like, I think like looking back on like how the education system and everything is set up is kind of interesting. Um, Cause like when you're 18 years old, like you're taking on, like I was, okay. So like I was taking care of like my parents paid for my school. So like, that's just like a huge step forward and advantage in life that not a lot of people have. Um, so like I was an only child, like we were, we weren't rich, but my parents just like saved a lot of their money. They, they like went the route of like, and I kind of adopted this from them as far as uh, spend well below your means. And then like, I'm an only child too. So like having one kid as opposed to like two or three is not as expensive. Have like a modest house compared to what they could afford, you know, so on and so forth. And then like they retired and moved to the upper peninsula where it's cheaper, but they retired like pretty young. Um, and then like, again, so I was spoiled through that. So it's like, I have been pretty privileged in that sense. Uh, like a huge advantage to like not have to pay for my degree. But like when I look at it from a perspective, of, like people that have to pay for their degrees, it's like, it's crazy how much of an investment it is and like you're signing away and you don't understand what you're signing for the loans at that point when you're 18 right like you have no clue and i think the toughest thing is when people like start with school but don't graduate so they don't graduate but they get all this debt then like that's the the bad situation that people get into and then also like there's so you don't have to have a college degree to make a lot of money these days like the trades right now like you see some of the money that these people are making through trades and you go through trade school right but it's not nearly as expensive as going through like you know traditional colleges um from my understanding so it's uh yeah i mean to be fair like i never really enjoyed school right i just like kind of did what i had to do to get by and stuff but um it's it's crazy to think like to me that like at like 18 you're supposed to make the decision what you want to do with your life when you're picking your major um i've i have heard a lot of times like places will say they just want to see you have the college degree it doesn't matter the major as much depending on the job right like i'm talking more of like what i was working in like data and stuff um, some like engineering, like engineering degrees probably required, right? But, uh, more specific stuff, but it's, uh, it's interesting to think and then how much people deviate from what they go to school for eventually, or, you know, change what they want to do. I remember when my first, when I went to school, I was going to major in, it was like entrepreneur. I can't remember the exact title. It was like basically entrepreneur or leadership or something like that, or entrepreneurial or whatever. And then I realized pretty quickly, I was like, well, nobody hires you to be an entrepreneur, so this doesn't really make sense <laughs> for me to do this. So then I switched to business management, which is just like a general business degree, basically. But, and then it's kind of funny enough now that like I kind of am an entrepreneur, like I have my own business right through my streaming, my content, playing. It's a bit different than like what you would think in terms of like traditional business, because again, I'm, you know. Yeah, the nice thing, the cool thing with streaming that's really nice is your your startup costs are so low so if you have like a more traditional business we have like a storefront you have to have a huge investment early whether you take out a loan you find investors and give them a percentage of your company whereas streaming it's like you literally like i think the computer i had when i first started streaming was that whole setup was maybe 800 900 bucks and that was like the only cost i really had to have right i guess like the mic so like with everything maybe like 1100 1200 all in yes i'm buying like coaching subscriptions and stuff but like you don't have to have all that stuff when you start streaming so it's pretty, the cost to entry is pretty low. So, here we open nines, get a couple calls. We're gonna flop bottom set on the King 10 nine. So two calls, four on the turn. And it's going to go ahead about turn multi-way. River could run out here. Gonna be betting again for value. We got GM to be super gross. <laughs> to be fair, it'd be really just like Queen Jack. He's repping. I guess maybe he flats 10, but with the flatter, he might squeeze some. So we're gonna bet River here. And we see the fold. Pair plates are currently a door to door. 
window salesman, it can be exhausting at times, can test you pretty hard. I would imagine, man, being on your feet and like, for me, it'd be like the going up to people's like doors and then like, obviously the thing with like customer service type stuff or like sales stuff like that is like, unfortunately, a lot, there's a lot of people out there that aren't very pleasant. <laughs> so like, to me, that's always the uh, most difficult thing. I hate dealing with people that are rude. And unfortunately in those areas, sometimes people uh, cannot be the, the greatest. Hey, zero quote. It's good to have you supporting. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I appreciate people in the chat, but don't ever feel like you have to. It's good to have people just watching, enjoying, and lurking. And I appreciate the uh, conversation regarding that uh, savings accounts. Like I said, it's probably something I should have done a long time ago to get more knowledgeable about. Especially if it's just like I'm throwing money away, not getting it right. <laughs> Devin said currently getting 4.1% from a high yield. Yeah, I can't remember exactly. Again, it's the one I have now is not that high, but... It's uh, it's like higher than normal. I guess I would have stand. I shouldn't say normal. I should say like a standard account might be. Deep Dane coming through with that sub. Thank you so much, Deep Dane. Appreciate the prime sub. Thanks for using the prime sub here. Still dash you say and you took that well talk about i'm sure you're talking about the aces loss i'm um, asking do i ever tell you seem stable all the time i watch you i mean everybody tells to a degree and gets frustrated i think i probably am way more tame than most people when playing poker if i had to guess uh but i still get frustrated at times like that's not fun to happen it's obviously a lot easier to take beats like that when i've been on like the sun run of a like the best cash game week sun run i've ever been on but that helps too but yeah i would say in general i usually take it pretty well but again it's like the same sort of thing too where it's you know i always talk about like another advantage of being really well rolled for the games you're playing and is like those hurt a lot less if it's not even a percent of your bankroll versus where it's like three percent of your bankroll or something I, I still get tilted when i bust live tournaments i don't know what it is i can't figure it out but i'm always so frustrated for like a minute at least and then like when i busted the uh the 25k pspc like after like people want to hang out i was just like do you guys need the night to myself i just like went back to my room I was just like really frustrated. So yeah, I don't like yell and throw things, but I get like, I don't know what it is with busting live terms, it just tilts me. But again, it's usually just like for a minute and then I go on. So if I like, if I bust the, an entry, but there's still an, like, I can re-enter that day, then I don't. But it's like, as soon as I bust, and I can't get back in the tournament for the day. I just instantly feel like frustration to <laughs> come through me. No matter what stage of the tournament's at, how I lost, like anything like that. I, I just like, it's so weird. And then, like I said, the PSPC was unique because it was just like dollar wise, it's just such a ridiculous equity spot that I'm never going to have again. And it's like if I sun ran in that spot, I could just make so much money. I mean, even a min cash was like 40K. Uh, but opens here, we get three bet, going to flat seven six suited, and we're really deep and we flop trips. So checks to me here, go small bet. Turn seven. and bet turn i with how deep we are maybe should have popped this king of the river um i'm, not, I'm curious what size this is i'm gonna jam this i don't know if this is right i also maybe if i'm gonna do this i maybe should have potted the turn so i end up seeing the fold there I mean, I actually probably like pot turn jam river better because to be realistic there, like I'm kind of saying I have a seven or nine full of the turn for the most part by value hands because even like tens, I don't know. Actually, I might bet like tens or jacks and check river a lot. How deep we are. Yeah, I think with how deep we are from the jam river, I probably should just pot of the turn. Not 100% sure there. GCT, uh, that's good. That's true, GCT. I did start some beef yesterday with Jada, I'll still say. <laughs> I told him he doesn't look like Garrett. He took me out of the top eight on MySpace. Oh, man. MySpace, way back in the day. Like the OG social media account, wasn't it? 
Uh, Tyler asked, do you lift weights? I have been terrible about this for four years now. So I go through phases where I get back into it for a little bit and just like never stick with it. I have no excuse. It's just my own fault. Um, but I was really good about it for like the six years before. Like I was like very committed to the gym and super good with it. And then I just like have fallen apart <laughs> for four years, which is a very long time. Like I said, I'll go through stretches where I'm good and then it just like falls apart. I have, and again, it's just, it's just di lack of discipline for it on myself, right? Or putting it as, you know, valuing it as much as I should too. Is the other issue, like putting a high enough priority on it. So it's definitely something I uh, would like to be better about. But again, that's just on me to do, right? Um, day, well, I eat, I eat a lot of, like, a, the most common meals that I'll have would be Chipotle bowl at this point. I've gone to Chipotle for a long time. I used to do the burrito, but I've been trying to cut out, like, the chips and salsa and then, like, getting a bowl instead of the burrito most of the time. Sometimes I still get the burrito, but... Um, and then usually I'll do double chicken, so I get, like, a lot of my protein from that. And then, like, on days I stream, a lot of times it's super lame, but I'll eat, like, a bowl or two of Cheerios right before I get on stream. And then I'll eat, like, usually one when I get off stream, and then within there I'll have, like, an apple and a banana at some point, too. Um, so, yeah. So, yeah, I'm definitely not, like, perfect. Chipotle's not perfect, but if you're going to eat out, it's, like, pretty good compared to most places. Especially if I, like, knock out, like, the chips and salsa and then get a bowl instead of the burrito. Ben 97 suited here. Chuck Flops, we've got a gutter with the backdoor hearts. So we'll call one here. Turn the flush dress. We pick up a combo draw here. Uh, I'm trying to think if I ever want to raise against bets here. What I do if they overbet. So I think if they overbet, we call. I'm just going to call. I don't know if I like this. Check River. I'm not going to bluff Jam River. I would want to bluff Jam if I had like, say if I had like 7, 8, or 9, 8 of hearts. That could be interesting having a boat blocker if they were to bet River here. But don't think we're going to... This one. Uh, Marcus, sorry, I missed your question the first time you asked it. Let me get back up there. I remember reading it and I was going to respond and I must have played a hand or something and forgot. Uh, let's see, where was it? Uh, have you been recently opening a 2x or has it been a while? Uh, so I use 2x, it's under the gun and hijack, cut off 2.3, button 2.5, small button 3x. So the reason is just like that's the size the GTO wizard uses at 100 big blinds. So if those are the ranges I'm studying, I want to use their opening sizes. My general understanding of why it does it is from early positions, you have more people behind you that can 3-bet. Also, it's more likely you have to play post-flop out of position. And then in position, like the cutoff and the button, you want to build the pot bigger when you're going to be in position. And there's less people behind that can 3-bet you. And then small blind, it kind of flips the logic because there's only one player left. And they're going to be in position on you, so then you like charge them more. Because it's only one person behind that can 3-bet, so... That's my general understanding of why it does it. Ah, uh, sorry to hear it, Devar. Got knocked out of the tournament. Here to chill the rest of the night, though. Appreciate you supporting. Hopefully the next tournament run a bit better there when you need it. Uh, Laugh asking, do you have to be relatively good to start streaming poker? Not really. I mean, you could literally be a new beginner. I mean, I think that... If you're like talking about like to you know gain viewership and stuff like there's a lot of things right like the better you are at poker the better your viewership's going to do but it's not the only factor right like if you're extremely good so someone that's way better at poker than me right but let's say they only stream 20 hours a month and they don't talk like at all on the stream 
they're not going to have as much viewership as I am, even if they're a better player, because they're not consistent with their streaming schedule. And they don't, like, engage with chat, and they aren't, you know, things like that. So the thing I'll say, too, is, like, with streaming, it's, you know, I think the biggest hurdle that people run into is they just give up too early, to be honest. I see this happen, like, all the time. So my first... It was either like five first five or six months of streaming i averaged concurrent viewers was under five under five <laughs> like so it's hundreds of hours of streaming to an average of like three or four people so everybody like will see the numbers that like streams grow to eventually or whatever but the problem is a lot of people give up so i've seen people that like they start streaming for a few months they're maybe averaging like 10 15 viewers and i'm like wow they're actually doing really like that's really good that's way ahead of the pace i was at and then they just like give up streaming or they just like really cut the hours that they stream and you know, it takes a long grind unless you have, like, name recognition within the community. So, like, let's say some famous poker player just starts streaming. Like, they're going to get way more viewership than I did when I started because I was literally just some rando live wreck <laughs> at the time, basically, um, that was streaming online. So that's going to be different. Uh, makes factors as well, but... Um, you know, being good at poker, the better you are, the better stream's going to do. You know, you guys are going to want to watch me more often, the better I'm at poker. So, like, that's always a goal of mine to get better, too. On top of the fact, I just want to make more money and I'm competitive. <laughs> um, but. Interesting turn card here. So, I threw it pre. We call. So, the, I call because we made it four. They only made it ten. So, I call the suit today. So, normally, I would fold. And then drill the club on the river. And I think we just go for big bet here. Trying to target their ASX checks it's not about check raising but i think on this river they might check sometimes so i'm just gonna bet here assuming they call pretty often if they have an ace if they jam it's kind of scary with boats out there but i think would have to call particularly with an ace river tends to be nasty and we just see the fold I really got to open hijack or cut off three bet from Hunter with four bet. See the call quarter pot here. And the five in the turn go quarter again. And then I would maybe consider checking a queen jack or 10 sometimes. He jams a little bit scared here when he jams, but we'll call his aces. Yeah, I mean, I don't think I want a full top top there, but we're gonna have to really hope he's running it with like jack 10 or queen jack suited. Call of those pretty, so anyways. Unfortunately for us, we flop top top, no good versus the aces. Got Antonio in the chat tonight. What's up, Antonio? Good to see you in here as always. Yeah, Devin, if you if you haven't tried streaming but you want to, I mean, I always just tell people just do it. The thing is, like, at first, going back to the same thing, is, like, when you start streaming, unless you have, like, huge... Uh, I can maybe throw out this. Um, unless you have, like, huge name recognition in the community that you're doing it and stuff, like, you're going to be streaming to, like, one, two, or three people for a while, so... It's like that's your stage to kind of learn what you're doing and people sometimes have commented how I, I talk a lot throughout my stream and keep talking and I think a lot of that's due to the fact that I had basically nobody watching me at first <laughs> because like there's nobody in chat so I just had my the thing I thought is like okay with the delay if someone comes in and says hi and then I don't talk until I see their response like I would just sit there for five minutes saying very little and then they're probably gonna leave before they hear the response right so I was like all right I just got to keep yapping <laughs> just like just don't stop talking David <laughs> and uh that's kind of how I looked at it, and I think kind of how I've gone with uh, like how I stream and such. But yeah, David, I'd say if it's something you want to do, try it out and see if you like it. You might find out you don't like it, you know, and then maybe you don't stream anymore, but you know, at least try it out, see if you do. I right, check twice here. They're calling her betting river. Given the action, and this have six high. We're good. Check 
Shit, I meant to open that. Fairy Plate said you get tilted in tournaments perhaps because you can't exert your revenge in a cash game you think I'll get in the long term. Maybe that's part of it. I mean, to be fair, like, I don't tilt, like, with, like, the online tournaments in the same way. Unless it's, like, a huge spot. But I'm talking, like, in live tournaments, like, I will bust, like, the first level after late reg closes for the day. And I'm just, like, annoyed. Instantly. <laughs> Even if it's just, like, I was short stacked, I jammed, lost a flip. Like, I don't It's just weird. I don't, I can't figure it out. <laughs> it's, it's odd. Um, Uncon asked, do you have individual stats or profit loss against individual players? So, yeah, in my HUD, I can see it. I don't show it on stream, though. I try not to, like going to showing other people's stats or databases or information I have in my database on them too much like some hands I'll go over like a basic stat or something but um, also I don't want to just like go and like hey here's who I've been crushing for money like I don't want to just like publicly be like hey I've taken tons of money off this player so I usually stay away from like going into that but I do you can go in, like I have hold of manager three so I can go in through my hand sample and then see who I've like won the most against or lost the most against uh, King Queen here, we're gonna be three bet and get called. Over half pot here on Jack Seven Four. And see the fold. Good to see you here, Ari. Said also don't like school. Yeah, I, I was not a fan. I mean, at the end of the day, though, like I said, I was I was very privileged in the sense that like my parents got me like paid for me to go through it, and at that point, I'd be really stupid not to take it up on it, right? Like I think that like that's definitely something I can use in the future and gives me more options of things to do. But I, I think it would, I would have to like think about it differently, even knowing what I know now. If I were, um, you know, having to pay for whatever that could be, right? I think the route I would go is that there's, so there's, there's Lansing, like there's one program I actually think is really smart. It's not like a fun necessarily way to go about it for to a lot of people because they want to go to like a bigger school. But I think actually like financially makes a lot of sense. So there's, at least back when I was in high school going to college, there was this thing called a, a three plus one program or whatever it was, but more or less you could go to Lansing Community College for three years where your like tuition rate is way lower and then you would uh transfer to like a four-year diversity year last year and you'd get the same degree so like you could go to LCC as it's called for three years go to Michigan State your senior year and have a Michigan State degree so I thought like if I would have had to pay for my own looking back and like I don't know that I would have made that decision at 18 but I'm saying looking back what I would do now I think that would be uh the route I would probably lean I think I'd probably still go to school because I, I don't see myself ever getting involved in the trades. Like, it's just, I, I'm not handy with stuff. So, um, that's like a, a detriment to that route, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah. Small one opens here, call Jack 9, Jack 10, 4. Let's see. Oops, meant to bet half, only bet min. Alright, so we bet min. And of course, this hand's gonna be weird now. Alright, so we get raised, just gonna call 6 on the turn. This is such a wet board. They bet huge. I'm like, I'm tempted to jam. They check. We're gonna check here. Or river. Uh, if they check, I'll probably bet. Try to target. It's like some ten that's played this way, maybe. It's a weird hand at min bets. Um, but we'll go for that here. You see the fold. Hunter said should have called the slow roll river. Oh, the ace service ace king. Yeah, got got to think about the slow roll opportunities. Got to consider those options, right? Although with how I've been running, you probably have to be worried about me having it and <laughs> being mad at you. Having it better than I did already.
King Jack suited, small bite opens, we three bet, take it down. Test said we underestimate, but I think talking like that for eight hours straight is a lot of energy. Do you feel drained? Like from streaming? So you feel like tired. It's it's very different how you feel tired in like different jobs, right? Like I, I've seen like conversations on from like, you know, way like really big streamers outside of poker. I've talked about this of like, so I feel like you're your social energy gets burned down from streaming like this is how i feel right so like i feel for like the social aspect i'm a little bit like more tired of like the idea of going out to do different things um i maybe am a little bit more tired of like doing social events but as far as like physically no like physically it's like i'm just you know sitting here and i feel fine but maybe like my social energy pack is like lowered compared to like other jobs whereas like obviously like from a physical perspective like the idea of going to work out after my stream or before is way more reasonable than if i was doing like a hard labor job right it also helps the fact that like i really enjoy and love what i'm doing so it doesn't feel like work you know so that plays a factor too from like the the energy drained mentally because it's like there's almost like three different things so i think like the jobs i had in the past would be a bit more mentally draining and like kind of soul draining at the same time it's like bad as that sounds i never hated my jobs but i never cared for what i did so it felt like kind of like to me it felt meaningless because I, I wasn't very passionate about what i was doing um but i was there just like literally just there to collect a paycheck right so like mentally and then like looking at like i worked a lot with like excel and different like data programs and stuff so it's like that could be draining it in one way this streaming is probably draining in the sense of like the like socially draining so like i'm a bit more tired going in like social settings in the same day um or after i've streamed a lot of days in a row than maybe i was before and then obviously you have like physically demanding jobs like hard labor jobs that are physically demanding so every job is going to have its own things but like again this is um against big bet i think we call this is maybe wrong weird turn card so we pick up the flusher but it double pairs the board <laughs> um they check what do we do i think i bet small because i don't think he's gonna play many jams here at all so i just get like a free chance to get bluffs through i actually ace high some yeah i probably should just check that it works out anyways um but yeah there's just like every job has its things where it's like it drains you out in different ways but like i said i would still take every job has its pros and cons right but i would take this over other jobs i've had 100 times out of 100. to see a cowboy in the chat it's very nice that you're the best thank you very nice appreciate it uh papa guy asking when did you how and where did you start playing online so i first started playing online actually back on like the stars.com client and it's in the fall of 2010 so like right before black friday played small micro stake tournaments so i i got into poker from playing a five dollar home game with friends we just played like a bunch of five dollar sit and goes and for like one summer we all loved it you guys know my friend dom run like diva so we went to high school together had the same friend group and we were he was in those games with me <laughs> so like to go from what we were doing that to this is like kind of crazy but um but yeah so we started there and then have uh like started just playing online a little bit while i was in school and uh yeah that's kind of how i got into it and then you know started transitioning to more live cash after like black friday and then once i turned 21 eventually so yeah that's kind of the uh progression through that ace on the river i'm trying to think if i want to bluff or take the show down here He'll beat a few hands, they bet, so we're just going to fold. Oh, yeah, I'm kind of, Yeah, so I do I do know the, like... I do have the, my database of hands where I can see, like, who I've won and lost money against. 
kind of joking back when I was in high school. I know I'm so old now, I can say that. It's been, it's made me feel so old, but 14 years ago I graduated high school. <laughs> I'm 32, so I graduated high school in 2010. 32 year old, old man. It's like crazy to think that, like how long I've been alive. The halfway mark was my sophomore year of high school. So from zero to sophomore year of high school, I've lived that same length now since then. It's just crazy. I feel like it sounds old, but I don't feel old at all. To be fair, like I have a job that's like pretty, uh, you know, fun. I, you know, it's different and I don't have kids. So, you know, I think a lot of that makes you feel younger too. I don't have nearly the responsibilities a lot of other people do that are my age. Player play joking here, so I've been crushing for money. Yeah, I just pull up the list. I'm just like, hey, player A, player B, player C. We can thank this player for our uh, profit this year. Yeah, I won't be doing that. <laughs> I'm sure some people would like it and be entertaining, but I'm uh, I'm gonna stay away from that. Interesting zero callback. So we were talking about the idea of like going to the community college. I don't know if it was community college, but like one school go to another because it's cheaper. You felt like it wasn't as good and it wasn't prepared for classes later. That's interesting. I hadn't thought about that part, but now that you make you say that, that makes a lot of sense and it should have been something to consider. I've never thought of that. If you feel like you're going to a school, it's like easy to get through and then it makes it difficult for your senior year because it's like a higher level to go to basically. I call it the king high flush draw. I don't hate chuck raising this as well. Good check raise, but decide to call. All right, this is very scary from Kakish. I actually think I'm going to fold the second that flush draw here. So his range here is basically just probably what ace high flush draw, 8x of clubs, and sets in two pairs, which we're not doing against it's good in sets in two pairs. Hard to get paid on the club. There's some reverse implied odds. I'm actually just gonna let this go. Very passive with the king too, but. Uh, two, I don't know what that stands for. Is that like a poker stat? Yeah, I, I, I don't know what the that stands for. Pair play, so you gotta be careful. Slow rolling, because what goes around comes around. <laughs> I know. I there was one time I uh, I did a pre flop solo. Pre flop solo rolls around as good because it's like usually it's like you have aces obviously, but I did it to J Dubs of all people once. I had aces versus ace king and he rivered a second king. <laughs> I think it was river. He hit two kings though and beat me. I was like, well, I just got punished for it. I've had times where I've been slow rolling people with a second nuts too. I'm just like, oh please don't tell me they have the nuts here. <laughs> uh, but again, I only do it with friends of stream that I know are okay with. I'm not just slow rolling random people out here, guys. Don't don't be getting mad at me. Some people get very very upset with slow rolling even if they see someone doing it, somebody else i only do it with friends that have said it's okay for me to slow roll them uh rankin asking would you consider doing a mini challenge playing 50 and dollar 25 not i don't have any consideration for it no i think that for me it's like i've always kind of viewed as i want to play and try to like maximize my earnings and like that's like what people want to watch stream for like the higher the stakes i play it's more interesting and then also trying to pick um, one thing I would consider doing is have like some sessions and some streams where I'm playing lower stakes just so like people that are in the community that are in Michigan, New Jersey can play with me that maybe can't play at 200 NL. So that's something that could be considered, um, but I wouldn't do like a full challenge out of it, right? It would just be like a, you know, one-off thing you do on rare occasion or something. So yeah, that's a possibility and something I've considered. Um, it's like, you know, like once a month people can play with me at whatever stake level. And I'll play and announce what day it's going to be. Um, so again, like that, it's mainly des designed for people that uh, like want to play with me. But then, you know, 200 NL is just like, a, you know, it's pretty decent stake online. Like there's obviously a lot of lower stakes. So that'd be like one consideration. Um, but as far as doing like a full out challenge or something, I wouldn't have any plans to now. 
All right, so we got a 100 L table here. We got open, flat, we're squeezing. And let's take it down. 10 over here, folding. That, I guess, what was your largest downswing in terms of buy-ins? That's a, uh, so it was 55. I had it last year at 200 and all. So over that time, I, I did, so that'd be $11,000. So I didn't quite lose that much money because I was getting rake back throughout. But as far as like on the actual tables, it, that's what it was. It said you're not old, I'm 46. And age is always relative, right? So like anytime I hear, like I remember when I was in middle school, I thought the high schoolers were old. It's like, oh my gosh, that guy's a senior in high school. He's so old and mature. And then now I'm just like, these high schoolers look like they're like seven years old. So it's all about perspective, I guess. And I said 35 and still feel like a kid and I have three kids. Yeah, I mean, I guess, you know, everyone's different, right? I would say like a lot of times like the younger and feeling older to a lot of people is like the responsibility. So again, like I have friends and know people that have kids, right? So like their responsibilities on day to day is like they're responsible for a literally for a human being <laughs> where it's like I have to do my job. I have to work, but my job's also something that's like fun and enjoyable. It's like I'm, you know, gaming basically. It's kind of how I've always explained it. Like online poker is my video game. So helps me feel young still. Hey, what up, Kyle? Good to see you in here. Saying good luck tonight. I'm going to be firing some on scoop shortly. Nice. Good luck to you. Newest member of the Poker News Ambassador team. So, shouts, Kyle, for that. Be playing all sorts of different sites through that, it sounds like, including Poker Stars over in Ontario. Perfect timing for that, too. We have on scoop and the US scoop uh, starting today. So, it's going to be running the 5th through the 22nd. I'll be battling in the Michigan, New Jersey pool on Sundays. Other than that, still grinding cash like we are tonight. But if you guys are looking for somewhere to check out some on scoop action, be sure to give Kyle a follow on his channel there. Grinding tournaments there. So yeah, small might open three out my favorite hand, pocket aces. And not my favorite flop with my favorite hand, though. <laughs> that is a very bad flop, actually. Alright, so where do I bet? I'm gonna be kind of, even though I'm only buying 10%, I'm actually gonna be really feeling gross if they check raise. This is just such a bad board. Uh, turn here. I'm trying to think if I bet to full if they jam or if I check. I think I'm gonna bet to full if they jam here. Trying to get some value from worse. There's a ton of bad rivers. I think we can still get worse to call some. But uh, I would probably check river, even though it's a bit nitty. And good risk kings with a heart. Oh man, too bad they didn't jam pre. Oh, I feel like such a nit. All right, so I do think we probably, I don't know, maybe that's too tight. You guys can let me know what you think once they check turn. To be fair, they're probably gonna bet their flush in their two pairs quite a bit. So I bet flop, bet turn, and then decide to make a nitty river check. No, regretting it a little bit, maybe. Probably talk about going to community college first. Also gives you a second chance on like getting higher grades to get into better school. That's true too. It's also another good point. Like especially depending on what your high school GPA is, um, it's kind of like gives you like a reset, right? Because I'm pretty sure if you go to like community college, they don't then ask for like your high school. Like they, I don't think they really care what your high school GPA was, right? They just care about what your community college GPA is. That's the man. I will say I preferred. If I had to sit through a class or sit at work, I would sit through work. <laughs> I did not like going to class. <laughs> and like the thing that was annoying with me for school would be like with the jobs I've always had, I was always really lucky that before this, it was like I would when I when I got offline for the day, like logged off or, you know, clocked out for the day, like I didn't have to do anything, right? Where school it's like you you have to do some papers, some homework. Study, I probably didn't study anywhere near as much as I should have. Um so like whereas like 
work was a lot more defined in a lot of the jobs I've had of like when your day starts, when your day ends and stuff. Not anymore, but like with the, like the previous jobs I'd had where I was like working eight to five. But the, the college is still better in like the lifestyle side because like school, it's like you take like what, 15 credit hours, maybe I spend five hours a week on other stuff outside of class. That's probably overestimating it. So it's like 20 hours a week instead of 40 hours a week, right? And then also college, like you're at school with all your friends and stuff. It's a lot, uh, a lot easier to, uh, a lot of people are on the same schedule you are, right? Whereas like once you all get into your own careers and stuff, like yes, you have people that work like eight to fives, nine to fives like you do. Um, but Rep said that slow rolls and knit rolls are very different. Oh no, yeah. So I would never that's what I'm saying, like I'll slow roll friends. I would never slow roll like a random person though. I'll slow roll friends that have said it's okay. Cause I there's some friends I have that I'm sure probably wouldn't love it. Here we're just gonna get this in given their stack size. We got a pair in that flush draw. If they have an ace, I think we're ahead here. If the worst flush draw, then we're just absolutely crushing them. If we give them the full the weak ace, that's great too. Ace Jack. So we're actually a slate underdog because they have a spade, but do you hit it and hit the boat on the river for good measure. Maybe could have just called that too, I guess, where I think about because the eight has some value. So yeah, anyways. Yeah, it works out. Zero cool max at 43 and feel young. It's kind of funny. Yeah, and it's all like I said, it's all relative and like I think how well you take care of yourself can make a difference too, right? Are you getting good sleep? Are you eating well? Are you working out? All those things play a factor too. On top of like the stuff I was saying. You about said 55 buy and losing streak. I'm on an eight buying streak and I feel demoralized. I mean, it's just like, it is, it's tough when uh, you're going through it for sure. And even like having like a big losing session, like an eight buying session, like doesn't feel good. Especially if you've been like break even or struggling for, you know, on the bad side of variance for a while before it. And it's, uh, the game can be brutal. Like as much as I'm loving this stretch, I'm just like trying to remind myself. I'm like, all right, David, you're going to go through a downswing here at some point. And it's going to take away the winnings you've made. Not all of it, obviously. Hopefully that'd be awful, but uh, you know, could you know i could dust off a hand like a few thousand in tournaments these next three sundays too pretty easily if i just don't run well and i get in for lots of entries my big buying events so i'm playing so i'm playing a 300 and two 200s and everything else is 100 or under but like the main events unlimited entries like let's say i get in for eight bullets that's 2400 and don't cash you know like that's just one tournament right there so that could add up pretty quickly we'll have to see how we do but So yeah, Sunday, my biggest bind will be the $200 second chance. The biggest guarantee is going to be the $100 Sunday Special Championship, which has a 125k guarantee on it. Flyers blind here, gonna be flopping the straight. And go for Batwing check two. Six. 
So bat flop, bat turn. And bad river. All right, still probably the best hand a lot of time, but we'll check here. Good risk kings to get a complete brick there. A lot of rivers we could still get paid on there. Orbat, good to see you in the chat. Sorry to hear that uh, work's been tough, but definitely make sure you're taking care of yourself. Not uh, being too uh, tough to you. Sorry, but uh, yeah, going through job stretches, especially where you're not enjoying your job and it's difficult, uh, it's not fun. But yeah, just make sure you're taking care of yourself to the best that you can. Uh, Jack High, I mean, I would say besides like the last part of <laughs> saying help perform poorly, I would say that uh, for me, like that's kind of how I viewed my career I had before, right? I was like, okay, so I can get an eight to five, right? So I'll have every weekend to do what I want, I'll have every night to do what I want, and then just like surround myself with like, a good group of friends, fun activities that I enjoy. And that was kind of always how I uh, like looked at to going through that. Um, that was like my approach to it. Like again, I'd like to think I performed well, but you know, um, but yeah. Decent flop over here, we're gonna flop a full house. Uh, just gonna go for the check call here. King turn check. And then river, go for bat here. I don't hate trying to check raise this too, but decided to go for bat, say the fold. Queen Jack here, cutoff's gonna open, we defend. Check, check. Uh, I'm gonna go to bet turn here. It's about two hours in the gut shot. To the fold. Hold this time to three bet there. It's actually going pretty good today for 570. We've got to kind of hang around about three buy ins. Okay, 10 here, get three bets. Go ahead and fold there. All right, 
little bit more folding. Biggest stack at the moment, this one down here, 274. I got open here, three bet hijack, they three suited. So we threw back a called flop the gut shot here. And go for the small bet. So bet call. Uh, pick up the double gutter on the turn. I think we're going to be betting turn here as well. And if both flush draws miss, I'm going to be probably bluff jamming a lot of river cards here. Uh, let's see, a club river. It's backdoor flush. Uh, let's see... I'm not sure I love this, but I'm going to go for it. I'm just hopeful that he doesn't have tons of clubs here. And whew, Jack's full. It doesn't have clubs. That's better. All right, so we run the bluff with Ace-3. I'm not sure I love it without a club. That's maybe a little bit too aggressive there, but decide to go for the value there. So I think like Aces, Kings, and Queens of the club I'd still go for. So that's kind of like some of the hands I'm repping. Obviously, I got Jack's full like he had there too. Um, so that'd be kind of like some of our value hands there. Aces, Kings, Queens, no club. I probably check back. The four I wouldn't be as worried about, particularly on the river, because he can't have like Ace four, the flush draw on the turn. So I don't think he's gonna have a lot of four X there unless he has a set that turns in the quads. So, anyways, decide to try running that. I'm not sure I love it, but uh, it doesn't work out there. We also do beat some miss like spade draws, I guess, on a rare occasion too. If we check, it makes it less likely one jam then. Yeah, I'm not sure on that one. Bluff raising turn over here. So let's see. Open, call, flop, check, raise, turn. So pick up the combo draw. Could have check, raise, flop too, but decided just to call. And then queen on the river. I think we're going to jam here with this one having the straight blocker. Diamond's bad, five good. So the thing is, I probably would check, raise some five, four. Um, Repping a lot of like uh, Jack seven sevens there. Anyways, bluff jam gets through. So one bluff jam doesn't work, the other one does. Yeah, and Jack, it's always, I mean, to be fair, no one's ever like perfectly efficient at their job, right? Like sometimes it's, I would like to think of myself as a really good employee, but there's definitely days where I was just like really tired and going through stuff, but maybe not at like the urgency and the pace that I should have. But I'd like to think I'd, I'd put forth pretty good effort when I was working more traditional jobs too. Slav, the chat's up, Slav, good to see you in here. Hope you've been good. Not last, how many hours do you play in a month? Uh, it depends. So last year I played. I streamed just under 1500 hours. So that would be like 125 hours a month on average. This year I'm planning to do a bit more. So I'm trying to target at least 1600. I'm uh, definitely on that pace right now, but I'll again, I'll have some more trips and stuff to have me away. Um, the year whereas my first three months have been not really much travel or things going on. So I'm going to be folding here. If it's like open through bet, I call limp raise through bet. 
Actually, I'm probably still supposed to call this. As long as they fold. So if they call here, some more reverse implied odds. Darian said you're a monster. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm trying, man. This this grind. It's been uh, it's been going well this year. I'm gonna keep it going. Did bluff off a stack, but we're still at about 395 today. Everybody, Ace King here get called. Flop and top trips. I would say decent start. And then going to that turn as well. It's booking a small win for now. Love to hear the win being booked. Congrats on the session. Sometimes when things are running tough, it's even those small wins, you know, you just get a couple of those going and it feels like you get momentum going again. Hopefully that'll be the case for you. I've just been taking a little bit of a break from poker, but I need a break because I'll be on close to burnout. That's good to recognize, though. It's good to recognize. Hopefully feel refreshed and recharged, or maybe you just decide, hey, you just don't want to play poker too seriously going forward, just even play super casually. That can be good, too, but it's good that you're taking care of yourself and, you know, understanding how you're feeling with it all. said in the final six of a tournament let's go good luck good luck keep us updated hopefully take it down general trent good to see in here so it was just in your game a second ago moving up in stakes and i'll see more of you nice if i don't have you marked uh friend of stream already let me know next time we're at the table together I get the purple friend of stream tag on. You're like, I have on a couple players here. Yes, sir. So it's still one dollar per hand. Uh, not quite today, though. We're we're work, we're trying to work our way back to it, though. This week it might be though. Actually, it's not gonna be that high, but. So we got open throughout the ace queen here. See the call, pretty good start, ace nine two. But small butt. Uh, big and chest that loves the solid your solid style thank you appreciate you check out the stream I'm glad you're enjoying it it's 
So let's see. We're about two hours, 40 minutes in tonight. We'll be going for seven hours. Still got a bit of ways to go. So I shut up two buy ins, about 1,100 hands in. Ace King suited raise, get called, huge flop, top here, top here with an flush draw. Get raised here, just gonna call, check turn. The turn will probably just be calling as well. Uh, if I had Ace King that wasn't one of these suits, I'd consider some check jams, but here I'll just call. And then a five of the river checks, actually a really good river card. Uh, less likely I have like the king five or the five two. Five two might even consider checking turn sometimes. Um, man, ace of diamonds not a great card though. Some ace three, ace four stuff, diamonds missing. Uh, not like thrilled. I think I'm gonna call on the five or the two pairing, but I would afford a lot of other rivers. And having the diamond not great, but the five pairing does take away a lot of their flop value. I don't think they're gonna raise king ten on the flop unless it was king ten of diamonds, which they can't have. So king five. All right. So kind of an annoying river card. Like I said, I was probably gonna fold this a decent amount, but when the five pair just makes it less likely they have like sets of fives, five two suited. If five two suited best turn, king five fives, all that. So decided to end up calling down there. Unfortunately, it no good. So let's see, raise limper, lead. Both these players are pretty short. I'm just gonna get this in with the overs and the open under. Just gonna jam it in. Get one call, 10 eight. So we got 45% still. And 0% by the river, so unfortunately lose that one. Open, 103 bets, flat 7 6 suited, check flop here. Um, I think I might check raise this one if he bets. And then turns if he calls, give up on some though. And just see the full bluff gets through. So profit is 148 at the moment today. So open king queen get called leads after half just gonna call here four times on the turn that's again call again not a good river but interesting with the diamonds ace doesn't seem too likely really against half i'm gonna call full river's bigger size this feels like we lose, we'll lose a lot but we are getting three to one all right Call this seven six bluffing, so they turn to gutter bluff river. We're good. Betting river here, so check check flop bet turn bet river. And see the fold.
Ethan asking if you have any concern of regs using G2 Wizard on another second monitor. Not really, no. So, I mean, like, like when I've thought about this before, it's like, I can't, a lot of these, like, regs are, mul like, multi-tabling even more so than I do. Like, I only play four tables. So, like, I can't imagine how someone could be going in, and, like, at these stake levels, right? Like, if I had to guess where the most likely scenario would be is if someone's just, like, one or two tabling, like, really high stakes, where I'd be the most concerned with it. But again, there are protocols in place to try to, like, catch these things, too. Um, but, like, I, at mid-stakes, like, the stakes I played under, like, I can't see, like, being really concerned with it. Because, like I said, these all the regs are multi-tabling. So it's, like, you know, I'm not really, you know, I'm not worried about it, to be honest. But I get why it's a topic of conversation for people. Um, unfortunately, there are some bad actors out there that have been caught. But, you know, again, people are getting caught, so... I mean, detection's working in that sense for those, so... But yeah, in the games I'm playing, I'm, I'm not worried about it, to be honest. So raise limper tens get called, check check flop, check turn. Probably call gets half pot and under, but would prefer a check. And then I'm gonna go ahead and block the river here. Snap calls, tens are good. And get through that fold there. Slap said dominates recreationals. Too much to play casually, but players who study give me a headache. I mean, like, casually, as like, you still take the game serious, but, like, maybe playing, like, less hours. Um, so you just, you know, you make some money on the side or whatever, doing something else, but... That's what I mean by, like, you know, casually as in, like, the number of hours or time you're spending studying. Aces over here. Let's go to the aces. So open aces call about the jack six two here. So bet flop. I'm gonna go ahead and bet turn here as well. I'm gonna have some turn checks, but decide to bet here. And then we were base, nice. So I'm gonna go for a block here to induce some bluff raises, and then also make sure Jack X is calling a bit more. So when this like new high card comes, we'll be splitting between like pod block here. So I'll block this one. So some of the value hands we might want to block like king jack, queen jack. Uh, mix in some bluffs obviously as well. And then this is also to protect my block rage when I do this sometimes. And then they're less likely to have an ace. Yeah, we call against like bigger bets here with like river two pairs. And just calls were good. 
Adverse King Jack. That one. Uh, you lose. Yes, it's real money. Yep. Real money on the tables. All right, guys, I'm going to take a quick 60 second break, but I will be right back. All right, guys, we're back. The video capture device so you guys can see. I'm not lying, I'm back. They get a fourth 200 game, by the way, as well. So we're gonna throw that in here. There we go. So yeah, small bet open, three bet the aces. See the four bet. So I'm just gonna flat this here mostly. Nine seven five. Uh this one is if they bet, we just probably jam against most sizes. On this type of board. If they check, we definitely go betting. So when they check, go for third. Hopefully I have an over pair that we're ahead of and they check jam and we can just hold. Let's see the check fold instead though. Hey, what's up Mark? Good to see you here. Still doing my thing. Yeah, good to have you in here. Appreciate you tuning in tonight. General Shrink asks, what's your opinion on HUDs? So I'd say if you're playing on a site that allows them, you should definitely use one. You're at a, it's definitely, you know, you usually get them pretty cheap relative to the value they're going to bring. So like I, you guys don't see it on your end, but I do have mine running on my tables in the background. For the stream, I think it just looks cleaner without like all the, the random numbers on stream. But for me on my end where I see the tables, I do see the stats. All right, 10 suited up with the button here. Open 10 8 suited, small blind 3 bets. Just gonna fold them here. Call 9 8 and 10 9, fold the 1 gapper. So, matter if you guys like tournaments here in Michigan, New Jersey, PA, or Ontario, Scoop has officially started. So, tournaments are running. Got the first two no limit events here. Running the high and the low of this PKO. There's also be a thirty dollar one here in about an hour. Is that am I reading that right? About an hour. There's also the eight game. I think is the first event tonight. So if you guys like mixed games, the eight game is a fun one to get in the mix for. High, medium, low. I'm gonna guess it's hundred thirty and ten for the vines, but I have the filters for no limit only. But anyways, scoop is started. Gonna be running fifth through the twenty second. I'll be playing the three Sundays, so my next stream will actually be a tournament stream. My first one of the year. 
uh, 7th, 14th, and 21st, I'll be playing tournaments. This Sunday, the 7th, as well as the 14th, I'll probably be starting at 4 p.m. And I think I'll be starting at 5 p.m. on the Sunday, the 21st uh, for the start times. So open eight seven here, get called bet the queen jack five. And just take it down. Alright, so some more fold in here. So biggest stack right now, 567. Up about 259 today, so a little over a buy-in. Things going well, I'd say. Alright, we're going seven hours tonight. Uh, about three hour mark today so far. About four hours to go until right about midnight Eastern Standard Time. All right, Fulton King 7 there. Jumping over here. Uh, slabs and basically pokers a side hustle. And that's how it was for me for a long time, too. Nothing wrong with that at all. That's what I did for a really long time. It's nice to have a hobby you can make money at. Most hobbies cost money. So if you have a full-time job plus that, it can add up for sure. Uh, against two here, it's going to check call, turn top pair. Uh, let's see. I think I'm going to call here, then lead rivers that are good. That's not a good river. They bet two. We call pretty quick, though, again. And give us queen nine. Perfect. Good turn, and river's fine. Okay, so a little bit more folding. Button opens here, threat queen jack suited. So see the call, huge flop. We're gonna flop top two backdoor clubs. Go for the big bet here. And just see the fold. Star says we've been running so good lately. I'm proud of you. Thank you, buddy. Yeah, it's been uh, it's been sick. <laughs> it's been such an insane uh, week for sure. Just the year in general has been a good start, but obviously this week's been like really insane. It's been really awesome. 
the run you dream for as a cash game player for sure. Speaking of the dream, we open cutoff here, 103 bets we call. Flat middle set. So I think we will check raise here. I'll have some hearts on check raise. I'll have like six, seven suited. I consider for check raising five, four suited too. Ace five, ace three. So for other value hands. Go for the check raise. See the call hard in the turn. So go quarter in the turn here. Not a good turn card. We get call, I think we're just checking river, um, but he ends up folding. So we take it down. Mark said, unfortunately, not in the tournaments. Play five and I just moved up from two. Nice. But here you move it up in the cash or game ranks. So plus 365 at the moment. Things are going good. So yeah, I'll be offline. I'll be playing only one of the next three days. So I'll be offline Saturday, tournaments on Sunday off on Monday. I think next week I'll be streaming Tuesday through Sunday, so I'll have six days. Probably just schedule six-hour streams. I'm kind of trying this idea out of doing the six o'clock start, doing either till like midnight or 1 a.m., depending on how many days I stream for the week. So what I'll probably do most of the time is if I stick with this is like schedule six to noon, midnight. Six to noon, I mean 18 hours, uh, six to midnight. But then like based on what I have the next day to decide if I'm going to play like a six or seven hour that day or how I'm feeling after six hours would at least like guarantee the six hours. So again, not permanently gonna switch to six necessarily, but I do wanna try it out next week. Button opens, see about Jack 10 suited, see the fold. Right, open here, defend to flop top top. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and check is even it's bigger bet here. See the call, check turn. And then it's not a great river. I'm gonna go ahead and block the river, but not thrilled on this one. And still need to get some value though, which is good. Shows King Jack slightly out pipped. Nice. Check, check here. And full turn. Like last, how long take you before you start winning regularly? So I first deposited online, like, this was, like, fall 2010, my first semester of school. I think for, like, the first, like, first semester until, like, right at the end there, I was losing. I lost maybe, like, eight or 900 to start, and then I had two tournament scores, like, right before the semester ended to get back to even. And then after that, I've been kind of winning since then. So I started playing micro and small take MTTs, and then eventually transitioned to cash, live cash, once I turned 21 more. Um, and then since then, I played live cash mostly as my main game for a while. Then the last four years, online cash has been my main game. Limp here, gonna raise a base king. 
Uh, I guess for lip raise. Their stat line's pretty tight, but I think we just want to jam Ace King here out of position. Still has Kings. Run into it. Do hit the Ace, though. So get it in bad, and we do get there. Better lucky than good sometimes. <laughs> There's one. There's one for us. Checks here. Call in small, east on the river. Either calling or betting probably most of the time here. It's gonna call, has enough flush. No good. Aces over here. That cut off open through with the aces. And pretty solid flop. So we've got the over pair with the club. All clubs out there. See the fold. Ace Jack here against the open from the short stack, bet and flop, and then I'm gonna go ahead and check turn for river. I don't hate jamming turn given the stack size. Actually, now I think about it, can't take it back now. As played, we'll check river, but as Ace Nine, nice, we're still good. So Ace Jack here, min raise we call. And bats will fold. Uh, well, upset. my problem is I'm getting tilted by micro stakes to make mistakes to cause me to lose more, even the mindset. Yeah, I mean, you definitely want to make sure that you're not letting, like, bad run impact your play. Like, if you do that, it can cost you more money in the long run, too. I think that's a big thing, is just, like, understanding that, like, getting upset about it is just going to cost you more money on the tables. But easier said than done, I get it. Uh, General Tranks that I've been hearing good things about taking breaks or only playing like for an hour and a half at a time. Is it hard for you to play long hours? It's something I'm used to at this point for a long time. Like with streaming, you're really incentivized to try to play like longer sessions if you can instead of breaking into multiple sessions um, for like the stream viewership. So that like kind of leans me towards how I do it. Um, but yeah, in general, I would say like it's not a bad idea. If I were to do like seven hours, I would probably break in like a three and a half hour session with a break if it weren't for the stream. A2 suit over here, we're gonna open, see the call. And gonna go for a check raise. See the quick fold there. King Queen opening, King 8 4 rainbow. Two of the stacks shorter here, one really short. See a lead, just gonna call. Bad turn card here. Um, this is really nitty to fold, but he leads from the big line as many players and the straight comes in. 
My guess is he doesn't bet like 7, 6, 7, 5 in that turn. Yeah, I'm actually just going to like way over full this spot here. I think it's probably okay when they're leading in the four people like that. I'm not like studying multi-way pots. I don't think there's a lot of information out there. But for the time being, I usually kind of just am a bit tighter against those lines. Again, very tight when you look at it like a good king. But think about like what types of hands is he going to have there. It's not a great turn card. Yeah, and Mark, I think it's a good point. You know, not everybody's playing poker to make money. That's what I was talking about too. Like most hobbies cost people money. So you know, if you're playing small stakes and like break even, it's like you just enjoy the challenge of the game. You know, the money is the way you keep score, but like you're not really worried about making a ton from it or anything like that. So yeah, I think a lot of people play that way. Everyone's goals of poker are different, right? All right, just checking here, multi-way. I ever try bluffing this in two people? I think I'm just gonna check here. Assume that we basically never win. Just check pull. It'll be kind of sick to jam for not much more, but I just don't think I play a ton that way very often. Uh, Wes asking, what about Harrington books on tournaments? Um, so I have not read any of the books, so I'm not sure on them. I would have to defer to chat uh, for feedback. Uh, the Butcher said, really want to see this downswing. I'm on at 200. Can't catch a break. Uh, yeah, feel free to send me a message in the uh, DM on that. Usually probably best if you have Twitter or Instagram, uh, but Twitch DM can work too. Any of those are good. So that's why East King's such a good hand because it cracks Kings 30% of the time. Yeah, you're still pretty live, right? You're obviously an underdog. You don't want to get yourself in this spot. You don't have to. But if you happen to find yourself there, you can still get there. Which is good. I'm going to open through at hijack here at Jax. Hey, Kingling. Good to see you in the chat. Hope you're doing well. Three bet the jacks here, gets under the gun, get called, and absolute beauty of a flop. So we're gonna go for small bet here with middle set, ace jack three. see the fold sadly uh but you're probably not the best to post any uh links yeah i've usually had in the past but then i'm always just worried like something's gonna get sent from not from you but just like someone just takes one person sending a bad link to a bunch of people that would be a problem so yeah probably don't post it here but you can just send me a, a dm Over here, Days King, open, get called, but flop on the 10 10 7. Get raised. Maybe he's supposed to call this, but we'll let it go. Mark said the best thing of his best solution is a bad is a, bad, a boxing bag behind you. There you go. Yeah, just get a punch in and. Move on with the day.
Got a button over here, just fold the jack 10. And well, I would like my cards back. <laughs> the nuts. Oh man. Not how it works though. Uh, King Last is the overlay invisible, or some, for some reason, am I going crazy? So I changed the overlay a little bit. If you had this, is the second day with this. So the slight change I made is like the, the I had the live counter on the bottom as well as like the gambling helpline number, and then I moved that to the, the gambling help number to the left side. I made the table bigger because I have more space at the bottom now, which means that the column of the, where the webcam is and the other stuff got more narrow. The webcam I focused more in on me and not as much of like a background space that there was before. Um, and then the overlay, it's kind of always been the same. I slightly changed the color. Um, so technically what you're seeing is like, so I have the, the background is like the bluish, the blackish bluish that you'll see on the stars table. But then I made like the boxes in black. So it, you don't really see much of it. Whereas before I think it was like a dark gray. So it looks a little bit different. But yeah, it's like, there's not really much of an overlay to it. And it's just like the block, the, just like it always has been. And the boxes are in black now. So it blends in a little bit more. All right, open queen and suited, get three bet, fold there. Open three bets. Go for the cold four bet here. And to the fold. Open flat full. If it's like cut off bot, we squeeze hijack cut off will fold. We got suited though. Only Banksy said, relatively new to poker, what resources would you recommend to learn more strategy? Not a total beginner. So not like completely beginner stuff. Yes, yeah, so I think there's like I usually tell people like a three-step program kind of it's like what you're doing now, I'd say is the first step, like checking out free content. Uh, a lot of times it's meant for entertainment slash education like the stream is gonna be kind of a combination of both uh but you'll pick up some good stuff obviously it's free which is nice a lot of training sites if you google search like poker training sites and just like kind of get the most reputable ones a lot of them will have free content on their youtube channels so you can see some free stuff through that um and then i would also recommend um after that then looking at joining a training site if you're willing to invest some money um the upswing poker lab I used in the past is a hundred dollars a month. Um, and I thought it was good. Obviously it's a pretty hefty investment for a lot of people. So, um, I thought it was worth it for where I was at, but again, you can do the free content stuff first, but then kind of that's that next step. And then after that, there's a tool called GTO wizard, which I think is incredible for studying and like just it's wild, the efficiency and how much it can give you information. So, um, I would say that's kind of like the third step. Now it can be too complex a lot when you're a beginner. So I wouldn't worry about it now. But that's something you'll learn through like the free content. Um, also, if you enjoy, if you're into tournaments, there's a lot of like good live coverage of tournaments. So there's like the Poker Stars live stream where they cover like EPT main events. They had the Irish Poker Open coverage. Uh, there's the Triton series, same sort of idea, WPT. Uh, cash game live streams are a bit tricky. So because there'll be some good players in the lineups, but a lot of times the lineups are designed to be like action driven. So like trying to learn from what you're seeing on the table there is maybe not always the best. Because some of the players are just like completely wild and just out there. And then the good players playing against them are going to be playing a much different strategy. They're going to deviate from theory quite a bit. And it's going to be a lot different than how you probably play online. So I don't feel like it's probably as applicable. Uh, also those live cash games are usually like you're super, super deep because they're high stakes games. So it's a bit different. Uh, but for tournament stuff, I think like live tournament coverage is really good for learning. Because a lot of times they'll be covering some bigger events. Um, 
and you'll see like some of the best players in the world in there but cash games for live streams can be a bit tricky it really depends on who's in the lineup and even then like it's if you're watching you gotta make sure you're watching the correct people um and if you're watching them they could still be deviating a lot from what you would want to apply like in an online cash game just because the people are playing against playing way differently so Yes, uh, Maguario, Prime Dope Poker Variance Calculator. Google search that and you guys can see how insane the like variance swings can be through like different numbers and like get, you know estimating win rates and such. It's it's pretty wild because um, like it's like you could be like a two big blind winner, but the difference between you running two big blinds above EV and being at four big blinds versus like below and running at break even, it's pretty remarkable. Even over like you know a couple hundred thousand hands. Kingling, talk about the overlay so I could tell something was different, put my finger on it. Yeah, I mean, it's, it was a slight change that I made. Um, I just feel like overall it looks a little bit better. And then I didn't have, like, I have the Poker Stars logo in the bottom left corner, which I didn't have before. So, like, obviously they partner with me. I feel like the least I can do is put a logo on there. Um, to, like, you know, they didn't ask me to do it, but I feel like, you know, it's fair enough for me to plug that in there. Obviously, like, I'm. I'm working with stars, so it's a site I recommend to play on. So, and I'm partner with them. So, got that down there. But all the other information. The only thing that didn't pull over is like the uh, the live clock, just because there wasn't a spot to put it really that I felt looked like clean with it. But then also, if you're on Twitch, you can see it. Like there's there's a clock there as well on the stream itself, and then same thing on YouTube. So, so yeah. The only thing that got dropped was that. I do like this better too because the actual poker table itself is bigger because I got rid of the bottom line, which is nice. Which is always, it was already pretty big compared to a lot of streams, but like that's always been a big emphasis, a point of emphasis for me is to have the the uh, the poker table and the focus on the table itself primarily without like too much distractions in the background really. Steph asks, how do you feel about these new poker vlogs showing vulnerability and personal stuff more? Um, so I'm not really sure what you're referencing if, like exactly, to be honest, because I don't really watch the vlogs much at all. I used to watch a little, a few people's like intros and outros to see how things went, but I like have not pulled up like YouTube vlogs in a really long time. I'll watch a few. I have uh, one that I've start, I've watched. I haven't watched like a full poker vlog in a long time, but if you guys know Frankie C, he, uh, you know, from was a next gen is like, it's uh i think it's his vlogs are incredible <laughs> i think they're super well done and like the storytelling and all the editing to it like those are really good so anyways besides his like recently i haven't watched like full vlogs so i can't really speak to um that specifically i think it just depends on like what the uh the creator wants to do and like has like you know cool storytelling and like talking about different things um and it just you know appeals to different people right some people just want tons of poker hands some people like the backstories and everything as far as like for my stuff like it's a bit different with online like i don't feel like online content in general goes down that route also personally i would just never want to i'm pretty like with my streaming and stuff like i've always tried to have a pretty clear separation of what i would view as like my poker and then like my personal life like i don't really go into anything <laughs> too personal on stream um, and I kind of just like really keep the focus and like I think people that watch my channel just like really like po they want just poker content like poker 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 whereas there's other people that want to watch and have like a mix of both right um, so I think every it's it's cool that there's like you're seeing more people branching out and doing different like formats if that's the case that you're seeing that more and I think it's good to have variety and I, again I think it just comes down to the creator of how they want to handle it for me, I'm just like very private with anything that's not poker related. I like having like my personal life. I kind of keep to myself and my friends that are, you know, in my personal life outside of poker. And then all my poker stuff, happy to share that and like social media stream and everything. But obviously too, like we still like in chat and everything on the stream, like we're talking about sports, 
random other topics, you know, but uh, for the most part, you know, especially with like the shorter form content, like I just like the, the, the videos I like just want like strictly poker hands. I think people like go to those videos because they want to just watch hands. But if you're seeing like more and more variety, I think that's a good thing is that just seeing like people doing the similar same thing gives like people that want to watch more options to see like what format they personally enjoy watching. Well, so it likes the new layouts, though I like a different font. So I, the only reason I had to do this font is because it's a narrow. So I had to do, it wouldn't fit, or I could make it fit, but I'd make the text really small. So that's, that's I don't love like the narrow part of it, but it's the only way that I can make it like a big enough size that looks readable and fits well. Hey, what's up, J Matt? Good to see you in the chat. Good luck on the scoop grind this series. Hope I'll see you on the Sundays. So I need to go refresh on two of the eight games. Fair enough. Yeah, the eight game event, I'm sure, is a fun one for a lot of people, but it's tough because you could be really good at a handful of games. Like you said, if you don't know a couple of them, man, that's gonna be, those can be some tough rounds. But good luck. Keep us updated on how you're doing throughout Coop. If anyone else in the chat's playing Coop, let us know. If you're in the mix, if you're making any runs. Hopefully, got some people in anyway, some Coop titles, particularly the trophy events would be cool. Mark said, I just listened to Kenny Rogers, the gambler, 12 times a day, and it taught me everything about poker. <laughs> it might have taught you something about poker. I'm going to be honest. I've heard of the song. I couldn't tell you the words of it, but I'm, my, my hunch is going to tell me that you're probably going to want to be studying a little bit outside of the Kenny Rogers song to, uh, <laughs> to get better at poker. It's a starting point, though. You got to start somewhere, right? Queen six suited over here. Take it down. We probably have six 200 L games running on the site at the moment. Uh, Sign the cash game. Online results counting only cash games. So it includes uh, cash games, tournaments, and rake back. So this year I haven't played any tournaments. So it's cash and rake back. So I've generated I think like seven K in rake back, maybe about. It's all from playing cash though, right? So it's like the rake back I've earned through playing cash. I don't have like a special rake back deal. I have the exact same deal everybody else does on stars. So generate just like anybody else would. Got open flats, call the jacks unsuited. It's really needed for the top pair of pots and multiple people though on all hearts. Right, I guess I'm just gonna make a crazy tight fold there. Not crazy tight, but it's very tight to pull the top pair. <laughs> Medium kicker, all hearts, multi-way, pots it against their stats there. We're just gonna make a tight fold. 
Not probably theory approved, but. So biggest stack at the moment is a 781 table. The other three stacks are 328, 200, and 207. So about halfway through today, just about three and a half hours in. To the grind tonight. Squeezing queens over here. Cut off opens, button flats, we squeeze queens. Take it down, kings over here. Open kings, get three bets, put in the four bet. All right, don't be aces, ace four, hold. Nice, kings are good. So you can see there, like the ace five, ace four jams there, you'll see like, even when I have kings, they still have like 33% equity, plus all the value they have, obviously the times that they raise and I fold. Nice to hold there. Puts us at plus 674. I think the new high point today. Queen 9 suit here. going to raise against the limp. And a flop a gut shot with an overcard. Go for a bet. Check raised. Probably can call, but not thrilled about this. Interesting turn. And we're going to start folding turn here against bet. Aces over here. So we had kings, now we have aces. Getting three bet yet again. Uh, 42. We're sizing up here with how deep we are. Alright, so going for the four bet. Huge pot. Aces King 657 in the middle. Both have a diamond and we do hold. There we go. I mean, another example of this run good. $655 pot, I think that was. That's a huge pot. Sick core. On the right side of the variance there. Plus 962 today now. That's a big one. Stuff asking, is it hard to date as a poker player? Um, I mean, I think it's just like any job where, yeah, it's just like a unique and obviously like the hours I play, it's changed since the beginning of this year. But yeah, I would say definitely more difficult than, I mean, it depends who you like, where you live and where you're around, right? So like, I'd say where I live, it's definitely a bit different because a lot of people like that I'm around have like very traditional careers and like I interact with, whether it's like friends or people I meet or whatever. Um, like eight to five and I, mean, I live in small town michigan so i guess it's not like you're seeing a lot of people that are like necessarily like content creators around living here you know, it's not like people moved here to be a content creator it might be more normal in like la or miami or something but um but yeah i mean it's just like but it's just like anything right it's uh you do the best you can with it and manage it but yeah i would definitely say it's like more difficult than say if you're working like a traditional like eight to five nine to five especially like like i said like where i live like the people interact with. I think it's a lot easier like as a sponsor, like to explain what I do to people just in general. As like a sponsor streamer is a lot easier than if I was just playing poker. Cause like even if people don't understand poker or gambling, like they understand the idea of sponsorships. And then like the people, a lot of people, at least like my age and younger understand like content creation and like 
I guess what some people would call influencers. I hate the term influencer, but you know, whatever it is, what it is. I always say that content creator, but like this, that general concept, like they understand that those careers are out there more. Um, so I would say it's probably easier than if I was like just playing poker to like explain what I do a little bit and probably viewed as like more acceptable from some people. Obviously there's gonna be people out there just like think gambling's bad in general and you're never gonna win with those people, but. Uh, flop a site over here to limp pot. Probably gonna try to go for check raise. Uh, I'm gonna try check raise turn now. All right, gotta bet eventually. Bet the river. And see the call obviously good <laughs> at this point. Three's full. Good risk queen 10, like queen high. Don't ask how many tables you play, four tables. Bluff the river over here. Bat flop, check turn, bat river. Bluffing. See the call, unfortunately, no good. River's top pair, top kicker. Not gonna get that to fold. So we open, get three bets. Go ahead and flat here. Flop the gut shot, backdoor clubs. So go ahead and call. Club turn. I'm actually probably gonna jam this turn if they bet. And if they check, do I bet to be willing to go with? I think so. So if I decide to bet here, it does have to be the call if they jam. Dang it. All right, 125 to win 275. Queen Jack, yeah, actually 29%, and unfortunately no good, so the club outs too. Could have maybe checked that turn. Not 100% sure there, but once we, I think when we decide if we're gonna bet that if we do bet that we have to really only call it off. That was not a hand I wanted to see if we up against, but you can see even there we still had 29%, so. Anyways, all right. Decorn said Ace of the King is nice to see a cooler finally go your way. I know Decorn, I've just been waiting all week. It's been ridiculous, but I went all week for a cooler go my way. And that time finally did. <laughs> I'm joking before somebody gets mad. Decorn and I are joking, guys. <laughs> oh man. But yeah, I definitely uh it's had a lot of those this week. Had a lot of those types of hands. It's been it's been good. Clean living. Folding. Uh, 
962 here, got small by limp, we check. You backdoor draws, so I'm gonna go ahead and call here. Don't hate the idea of raising. I'm actually gonna go for it here. So that call four turn is gonna give up here on the turn. Queen on the river. Probably just gonna give up here. Even if they have like, I just don't have like a lot of like hands that are gonna want to bet river after I check turn. As we played it. Right, cut off limp here, complete the king eight suit in the small blinds. Top pair, king kicker here, go ahead and lead out. So calls, I'm gonna go ahead and check the turn. And then river, go for a value battle on the end. Hope they have like a small pair of three here. Looks like we get some value. And yeah, six is perfect. So look at the cash game lobby over here. So cash game still running during scoop here. We got seven 200 NL tables going. I'm in four of them. The usual a night the grind. So up 714 today, about three and a half binds. Not gonna hit a rake back chest for a couple days here, but profit on the tables so far is good tonight, guys. The, uh, if we can see if we can go five for five on wins this week. Smallest wins been 1.2k, which is ridiculous to say too. Every wins by at least six binds. Oh uh, man, we're a little over the halfway mark tonight, about three hours, 45 minutes into a seven hour stream, so. Gotta fold King Jack there. Uh, Mark asked, no, run it twice? No. So for the stream, I think most people prefer just to see, like, the swings and, like, win the whole pot or lose the whole pot. I think it's just better for, like, a content perspective. So I've always just ran it twice or ran it once. To be fair, I've never ran it twice even live either. I kind of just, like, prefer just to do it once. <laughs> Game seems more fun that way. I obviously completely understand from the EV per or from the, the variance perspective, right? You're lowering variance for no cost. But, yeah, I just always kind of prefer to run it once. That flop check turn here, two on the river. Yeah, just gonna check river here. Maybe, actually, I think well, I probably should have bet that. Easy to say once I see their hand, but yeah, turn probably should be a bet, or river, sorry. Once the turn checks through.
So a little bit more folding. King seven suit over here. So we got a small one open call here. Uh, a few different backdoors. Goes for half. All right, I'm gonna call verse half. I'm not sure I love it. And full turn. So open the hijack here with Queen Jack. So about three hours, 50 minutes, and we're going for seven hours tonight. Open King Queen down here. Got King Queen there, Queen's over here. So they're about to take it down. One opens here, we call in the big blind, flop a couple back doors with the over cards. Get raised. I think deeper, I'm gonna go call ahead and call here. Huge turn card. They bet again. I'm trying to think if we ever have raises. Um, with this hand, it'd be pretty miserable if we got three bet on the turn. I think I'm just gonna call here. And heart on the river. So I don't have a heart. But I think it's going to look like hearts a lot if he checks. So we go for our pot in the river here. Those pair the actually I don't like the pot size because the board pairs. I probably want to go three quarters. And yeah, shoot, I don't like the size now. If it's a heart that's not pairing the board, I do like going three quarters, but I don't. Or I like going pot, but I don't like going pot on the board pair too. And then also it becomes less good of a blow. Yeah, I don't like this pot size, but hopefully I get bailed out. But <laughs> this is mainly trying to get over pairs of folds. So we end up seeing the fold there, but like I said, I like three quarters on the river better. Um, out Martin asking, do you ever avoid certain tables if you lose versus somebody? Like if I lose a hand versus somebody, not necessarily no. I, I try not to play at tables that are all regs if possible, um, but other than that, try not to be like too crazy about moving around too much. But yeah, if I if I'm at a table with like all regs, I would rather not be. On rare occasion, like if I'm super deep with like another reg who's got like direct position on me, that'd be something to consider too. But that's kind of about it. Even then, though, I usually just stay, even though I probably should leave, <laughs> but...
is five suit over here on the button. Open three bet, take it down. Thoughts that I figured I'd check it and see a losing session one of these days. I know it's been crazy. I'm it's just like every day I log on, I'm just like, dude, I still have got to be getting crushed one of these days sometime soon. It's just like it's been too good. I know it's not how the math works each time's independent, but man, it's just been crazy. It's been nuts, especially this week. Over the Queen Jack suited, big blind defend, uh, bet the open under backdoor club, see a quick hold. Aces on the button. Friendly pocket aces. But open. And just raise and take it. And got about three hours left tonight, just over. Brand said that Frankie's the wizard of editing. No, oh, yeah, his dude, his videos are so well done. Like, very impressed. Like I said, I haven't watched a full poker vlog in, like, forever. Um, but, yeah. His is really good. Aces on one table, kings on the other. And take that down. Kings over here, we're gonna open big line defense. Check, check, flop. Or turn, start by turn. And see the fold. Uh, Drag said better to overbet than pot there, but maybe if you want. Yeah, I mean, at least I don't know if I want to be betting like flushes there. So I usually like try to play like one. I, don't, I try not to split sizes like if I were to in that spot. So if I were to bet, it'd be like only overbet or check or it'd be only betting like 75 or check. So yeah, I think I'd want to play 75 given that it like the flush comes in, but the board paired too. Some cold four in there, but full this time.
Hey, what's up, friends? Good to see you. Um, how's Scoop played? So, Scoop is this the online tournament series that's going on. So, in the US and Ontario, we have the it's a spring championship of online poker, so it runs May 5th through the 22nd. So, there's a whole bunch of events. I mean, it's like 70 events that have a high, medium, and low buy in. I'm personally going to play the three Sundays. I'm not going to play the whole series or anything, but we'll play the three Sundays. Uh, call flop. I'm just going to call turn here against Overbet. Pretty wet board. I'm trying to think if I ever play Raise. I'm going to call Diamond River. Not perfect, but I do have a Diamond with top two, so I'm pretty tempted to call. And then against Riverbet. This is so nitty to just call, but I'm just going to call here. Get her Zace King. I'm curious there if I raise, if he turns that into a bluff jam, blocking the nuts. Put the Ace of Diamonds there. But that still might have been too nitty on the river against 10%. Most likely good, but we have to have worse call there. For a raise. To make it for the times we value ourselves against the flush that goes 10% sometimes. So a bit more folding here. MCCS is a statistical way to measure luckiness. How do you know if you're running well, if you're playing better? So there's something called all in EV that's part of it. So it'll basically, what it'll do is every time that you get all in, no matter if it's pre-flop on the flop turn with cards to come still, it'll give you whatever percent of the pot you have equity for. So that's going to be better telling than like, say your actual dollar amount, but it won't account for like card distribution, right? So. It tells a, it's a better tell of how you're doing, but it's not perfect. So like, for example, here, I'm flopping a set. That's lucky, right? I, it's not going to account for that if we get all in on the river and I have a nuts and they have ace king or something, right? All right, so get through about here. going to go ahead and call versus the middle set and do some raising two, six on the turn. Question is, do I ever jam turn here? I think I'm just going to call and really outside of like a, a four, eight or nine of clubs. Just call down. They check here, we'll go small to call if we get jammed on. Say fold. Open here through at the eights. So I think I get called Queen three two. So bet flop, turn ace. So do I turn my eights into a bluff here? I'm gonna go ahead and check diamond or river. And it's gonna probably check down his played fold, they bet. Eric asks, how long is the stream gonna be? So we're gonna go for seven hours tonight, so I'm going till midnight Eastern Standard Time, so three hours from now. We'll be playing. <laughs> King, kings, king, queen, a lot of good hands here. 
Let's go to the Kings, the best of them. So, raise Lipper, get called, Jack 7 3, go for small bet here. Let's see the fold. Ace King here. We're gonna take queen five suited. And queen four fold over there. Bluff and river over here in this limp pot. Or not lip pot, sorry, it's open. We defend, checks through flop, checks through turn, and we bluff river. And see the fold. Continue folding. All right, continue to fold a little bit more. So the biggest stack we got right now is 974. Also have a stack at 744, 241, 234. So we got two pretty big stacks at the moment. So continue to fold a little bit more. a bit more folding. So let's see here. Why? Oh, that's why, okay.
We got open here. Go ahead and call Jack seven three on the turn. That's half six on the river. It's gonna check down. Like we're good versus nine eight. Perfect. River straight job. It doesn't matter. Obviously, <laughs> no cards to go for us. So we do catch the bluff from the flop in the turn there. Hold the jack eight. Hey, what's up, personal? Good to see you in the chat. So good luck today. Had a good session. Hopefully going to follow up with another one. Thank you. I said thank you. I'm glad to hear that you had a good session. Oh, man. I thought someone the other day said it was their birthday. And I said thank you. And I'm like, why did I say thank you? Um, but yeah, glad to hear a good session. Hopefully back-to-back -back good sessions. Hopefully you get on a hot streak like I've had this week. Been uh, running super well this week for sure. Just this year in general, but like especially this week. It's just been like heightened. Open ace eight suited, big blind defense here, flop flush draw. So that flop here, king on the turn. And go ahead and turn. Tank folds there. One eight six next. So yeah, we got a little under three hours still left tonight. Session at plus eight fifty seven today. A bit more folding here. So I got three 200s and then that 100 with the black belt table. On some 200 wait list too. Had a game breaking down, so. Still got the two big sacks though. Four next. Ace Queen here get called. Really good flop. 
0.95, go for the C bet here, so flop top top. Get check raised. All right, so there's a handful of different straight draws here. We're just gonna call it in position. And that's a really good turn. If they bet small, we'll probably just jam the turn, I would guess. Maybe that's incorrect, but if they jam, we just snap call. Has 7-6 for the combo draw, and unfortunately we fade, so they hit the 7, but not gonna be good enough to beat us. Ace Queen holding. It's our stack. We have two nine hundred dollar stacks now, and we're plus one k in profit. Running. Eh, what is that about? Two eighty above EV tonight. So things going well, or above all in EV, I should say. Check back flop here. Three turn. Let's play a check down. Hope we're good. Looks like we are. Nice personal moving up stakes. That's good to hear. Always fun part of the game and the process, right? They get a fourth Twitter table. So I'm gonna throw it in here. Check in here against a couple blimps. Then check the queen three two. And against half pot, just fold there. So limp raise three bets. Uh, let's see. So it can kind of go either way here. All right, so I'm gonna go with the four bet, and then once we do this, this would be to go with to the fold though. Up. right about 1k today yearly profit as of right now about 32 six it's <laughs> just crazy third almost a third of the way to 100k this year i got i've been running well i can't expect to keep this pace up for the year but coming into the year i was hoping to have plus 60 so we're on we're on a good pace for the moment i've played quite a bit of volume though i probably won't keep up this volume pace for the year so i'll have some like poker trips or non-poker trips but
Small button opens here, call H3 suited, flop the gutter. And check some go and check here. Queen on the turn. I think we just want to check this out. Maybe we'll still start buffing flopper turn, but obviously bet we'll call ace high can just be good sometimes going check check, and obviously we can improve to the straight or hit the ace for top pair. Eight on the river. And just gonna check down. We played it. And unfortunately we're really eight there. Let's go just start holding like a boss and good luck. Thank you. Yeah, that was, that was a bit scary there. They've had the gutter and the flush draw, but. Fortunately for us, the Ace Queen held up. Improved, but not enough to beat the Ace Queen. Raise up nines here, big one defense, king seven, two, two diamonds. Fold down four over there. Here, pick up nine and see on the button. So, raise nine and suit here, big one defense. Raise up king queen here. So bet call 10 of the turn. And I'm gonna go over bet turn here. And just snap full take down turn. King three suited, dropping that. Over here with the limp pots on our gun limp. We check on the big line. King five three two spades. So check check. Go ahead and bet turn here. It raised the min. Not thrilled about it. But I'm gonna go ahead and call here. Good river is pretty tempted to call unless they overbet. I guess I'd be a little bit worried if they like pot the river, but still probably call. They have a set and check it back. All right, so King Nine Force doesn't face river bet there after the two draws miss. EKW said right back to crushing. I see. Man, it's been. Uh, I just keep saying like every day I like log on. I'm just like, dude, I just like have got to get crushed today, right? <laughs> and then it's just like I keep running really hot. Oh, that's crazy. It's been fun. Yami said, do you ever lose? I've seen me watching the last five days and you haven't. <laughs> well, Yami, you might be my good luck charm because I think this week's probably my best cash game week ever. Especially in terms of buy-ins. Uh, I'm going to call the gut shot here. Really bad turn card. And we'll take the free river. On a spade, I might have bluffed if they check here. I'm just going to check. Probably lose a lot of the time, but maybe on rare occasion with the king high. 8-10. Good. Justin said the heat what a heater. I said you're a class act and a true pro. Keep it going. Thank you, buddy. I appreciate that. La la said you won a lot these last few days. I have. It's been so the day it went Monday 3k. Tuesday 1.2. Wednesday 1.4. Yesterday with Rake back like 1.8 or 1.9. And today up 1k. It's been crazy. I 
of Hydrock open here, threaten these king of the big ones. So he threw back it called here. I'm gonna go and check Jack 10 6. Again, these are spots I maybe need to be betting more often than I have been. Maybe suits I would want to be more often if I had both of like the suits out there, just because I'd have more like double barrels, like if I had the Ace of Diamonds, for example. Uh, S play though, we're gonna check. That's half, go ahead and call. And six there, we're gonna check. It is kind of interesting if he jams what I want to do. Um, so he'd be basically just saying, I don't think he's gonna have a six very often because he can't have six X of diamonds. Uh, Ace King, the problem with Ace King does become that there's some. Um, what am I trying to say? Gonna be some uh, King Queen stuff blocked. I'm actually gonna have some six X myself here. I'll throw at seven six suited pre. I can have a 10 here, so like 10 9, Ace 10 suited at a frequency. Actually, 10 9 I probably mostly call. Um, let's see. It's just kind of interesting, like how thin he would. Because actually, I don't think he's gonna want to bet a jack like this, because I can have the six. Borg's not gonna check back a lot, unless he has pocket fours exactly. I think I'm actually gonna talk myself into a huge hero call here. Because <sighs> I don't think he'd want to do something. Because I'm gonna have some six X. Poof, jack's full, we'll have that. All right, make the huge hero call. Could not be more wrong. <laughs> um, and like I said, so I'll have some six extra drop seven six. The K ace king can. I mean, we block like king queen missing, obviously, if they decide to have that. Could have some ace ten suited. Yeah, I don't know. Not one hundred percent sure on that one. Like I said, those are spots I need to get better at with like the ace king highs. But maybe I'm over or underestimating how much he would have like ace jack maybe there and then consider jamming river still too. Like yes, he'll value on himself sometimes when I have the uh like the seven six five six suited, but maybe against over by jam could consider just calling. With those and then folding the other stuff. I probably don't have like the jacks in tens there because I'd probably bet the turn if I check the flop a lot of the time with those. I don't know, the ace king was maybe just like a complete terrible call, but I'm just trying to think of like how thin you want to go for value. He probably doesn't have much six X there. Maybe checks queens back on the flop, I don't know. Interesting hands. Like I said, there's a chance that was just a complete punt of a call, but Chance it was a complete punt of a call. Stars ask, uh, so preflop if they go all in, would you go on the small pocket pairs? Pretty rarely if they have a decent stack. That'd be like a very specific situation. But small pairs, I mean, it's basically a never know. If it's like the small blinds jamming every single hand, I have like pocket sixes, and I'm in the big blind, then yes, I would call. Uh, but that would be, you know, be like that specific of a spot. Hold four right here with the king queen suited. So this goes under going to open hijack three, but we cold four. And back over to the cutoff here. Folding.
So you fold a little bit here. Folding. So a little bit more folding here. Hold the seven four suit over here. Limp here, raise up the sevens. See the call, queen, jack, six, two spades. Drag said, usually nuts or nothing. Yeah, it's, I don't know. I, mean, I was trying to figure out, I was like, how thin for value would you want to go? And then the six pairing felt like it changed the board dynamic quite a bit there. Um, as far as like what they'd want to bet, especially because I can have, I mean, to be fair, maybe they don't give me credit for the seven, six, six, five, which, you know, changes things too. It just depends if they like give me six X in range. Uh, comedy, uh, yeah, so I did play a live event against uh, Alexander Botez. Yeah, so it was the PSPC last year in January. Uh, she was super nice at the table. Like, you know, we had a really fun table the first day. So we were on the feature table the first half of the day. And it's cool to see someone that has, like, a huge following in a different game, like, have a lot of interest in poker. So I think, like, any anytime you see, like, massive creators get it, having interest in poker, I think that's good for poker in general. For sure. Button opens here, three at a seven to uh, small blinds. And get four bad. You're not getting a good price. We'll fold the suit ace here. Sit over here, let's go. This king sit in. So, race against king suited.
uh, rear king four open, big blind defense, go for the bet here, middle pair. So bet call, five of hearts on the turn here. And go ahead and check, ten on the river. Uh, let's see, hearts came in, five comes in. Alright, make a fold there, maybe a little tight, but we'll let it go. Folding here, biggest stacks 978, and then the other three stacks basically starting at 200. Current setup and situation. So one open here through at the five four suited. So we threw back call. I go for the C bet here in the ace high board. A couple different backdoors. Got backdoor flush draw, backdoor straight draw. So ace on the turn. And we're gonna go ahead and bet turn as well. So don't want to bluff miss diamond super often, but these really low ones we will sometimes. And then here on the river, we have to have some bluffs. So again, I think we want to make like the straight draws fold here. They have a queen fold. Ace is obviously never folding. I have to have some bluff. I think probably makes the most sense here to use this. So go for the jam. Once we get, don't get snap call, I feel pretty good actually that we're gonna get this through. Nine X of diamonds would be like the biggest concern at this point. But even then it's hard to call because it'd just be a bluff catcher for them too. So we decided to go for the big bluff. And five high bluff gets through, let's go. Love to see it. Stacks right now got 270, 200, 200, and then 999. We had it before we posted this all, but we had a thousand. Over here, defend big blind checks through flop. We're gonna bet out turn return two pair. And five of the river go for value on the end. Snap folds river. I'm gonna fold this time. Sometimes I got a little bit tighter when the short stack limps because sometimes I feel like it wouldn't jam with hands that I really don't want to get it in. Like threw up more of like the suited A stack still. I would be a little bit cautious with like those like Jack Tony Suda type hands. Ace five suited, take that down. Ace five suited again, hearts as well. 
Ace on the left, five on the right. So open, we three bet to the call. Got shot, back to our flush draw. Look for bet here on eight, four, three. That call, seven turn. And gonna be betting again. This will be a triple barrel candidate on that non spades. Got a six or a two, double gutter. Hold. Where they're gonna check jam. I'm in the tank like this. And there's an pull. All right, we get it through. Two bluffs getting through there. First, I had the five four suited on the river, and then had that one. Limp pot here, gonna lead out the gut shot call. Still the same gutter on the turn with that turn. To the fold, perfect. Check, check, and a bet turn over here. We turn the straight, get raised. So they'll have ace king range, we don't. I would actually jam this a lot of the times given how much deep we are, but when they min click it and I have hearts, leaves us to the call. Shopping with King X, we are beating now. Board's paired. I mean, with the stack sizes here against our player, we'd still call, but... Ends up checking. I mean, maybe we miss a chance to get some value from, like, a 10. Like, trips there. They have aces. All right. So, maybe should have just got in, I guess, against their stats. Yeah, I don't know. Easy to say in hindsight, but... It's nice to... The other King 9s I would jam that wasn't hearts, but decided to just call it the hearts. Because we're not as vulnerable to rivers. Under the gun open, we three bet the big line. So hold. We're currently up 9.39 today in the session. Trying to book a fifth straight win this week. So far up about four and a half buy-ins. Reminder, I'll be offline tomorrow. Scoop tournaments on Sunday and then off Monday. I think next week's going to be cash games Tuesday through Saturday. I'm probably going to run 6 p.m. to midnight schedule. Um, so I'll guarantee six hours for the streams, maybe go seven on them. And then on Sunday, I'll play some coop events. So just a heads up, we can try starting out an hour later next week. But it has six days of streaming, so. Oh, Alan. I mean, that's, always, that's the one hard thing with poker, because like, that's how you make money, is people playing bad. But it's so frustrating when they play bad, and then that time they beat you for the hand. So even though you know in the long run like that's how it can be profitable, it's really frustrating in the moment, for sure. Scooters that need to show the 5-4 bluff? No, I don't want to show bluffs. I don't I usually stay away from it. Oh, he's in chat. <laughs> he's debated for so long on the aces full bluff. Made the mistake. <laughs> Off a nine. Oh, full of the nine. I mean I can't. I honestly can't blame it at all because it's purely a bluff catcher at that point. That is a pretty nasty spot. Like I said, I mean, I think, like, in theory, it's probably one of my best bluffs there. Like, normally I don't love having diamonds. 
but I want him to have like miss Jack. Like he could have like Jack ten of diamonds, King Jack, King ten of diamonds, like those combo draws there on the turn. So like not having, not blocking any of those like straight draws that we get the auto folds from is kind of nice. So like I'd rather bluff with like five four diamonds, I think, rather than like the straight draws that miss. If I have like a straight draw with a diamond, I would definitely give up. But maybe like straight draws without a diamond, maybe bluff. But but then like if we have like the king high diamonds, right, then we can just check back and win sometimes. Whereas five high just like is just playing the board, right? Yeah, that's that's a nasty spot with the nine in their spot. I actually like the fold from them to be honest, because he's gonna have some weak ace x there. It's kind of the nice thing with my ace, my five four suit. Actually, no, never mind. My five four suit, I didn't block because there was the ace of diamonds on the on the uh, the board. It's like it, initially it'd be like, oh, it'd be nice to not have the diamonds, but to be fair, I never. The only diamonds I ever have are five four diamonds because it turns the flush draw. Like all the other ones, I would stop betting the turn. So. Greg set up 600 big blinds the first 130 hands today. That's insane. Love to hear that. Great start. All right. We got another gun jam for nine bucks here. Easy call. Ace nine, ace queen. So we're behind. Pretty far behind now. We can get some good turns though. That's not one we're done the turn. Do a little bit of folding. Uh, call me asking if anyone has any feedback on the GTA Wizard higher tier sub to get access to the video library. Their thoughts. I haven't personally gone through it, so I don't have uh, feedback for you necessarily. But if anyone does here, call me looking for some feedback. Ace King call check the eight seven six here. No diamond feels really passive. We're just gonna check full opposition. So a bit more folding.
Alright, so a little bit of fold in here. So we got the 1 100 game, and then we got three 200s. Actually, I just got another 200, so we'll drop the 100 game. Just as we got that started. Two hours ago left still. The limp raise, big wine call, flop the eight here, tight eight six, rainbow the club. Huge turn cards. So we'll go ahead and bet turn. Player's pretty short, so if they call, we probably like slightly over bet jam. So yeah, it's 55 back, 44 in the middle. Just gonna be jamming on them here. Hopefully they like turned an ace. And still gonna call here. See the fold. play like the five high triple barrel bluff yeah that was a that was a pretty fun one glad it got through <laughs> those are ones where you feel stupid when you get called down but they feel good when you get them through it's all it's worse live too because it's, it's like you gotta show your hand at the table you have to see everyone's face like here i just look at a computer screen name that nothing changes but live it's like you, you just know there's people at the table that have like never ran a triple barrel bluff in their life and they see you show five high and they're just like they look at you like you're the worst poker player it's ever been seen it, does, it shouldn't matter, but I'm sure subconsciously it does a little bit impact you. You're good when you're not used to playing live. Open three bet kings here. Three bet call, jack six five two hearts. Go for the half pot bet. All 10 turn. Maybe barely again here. Pretty wet board. And if we get jammed down, obviously we snap it off. River will be interesting. If it's a heart river, I'll probably check Kings No Heart. Nine would be a bad card as well. Jack would be bad. Let me see the fold though. Kings are good. If he has like ace jack there. I, I think I could see him jam in that. Like an ace jack suit, I think would make sense on that what of a turn card. Obviously, you could have like a setter jack 10 too, but. I think he's gonna have worse value that jams as well as some combo draws. Like let's say he has like nine eight of hearts, turns the open under with the flush draw, decides to check jam that. Stuff like that. So again, about five hours in, just short. I'm gonna be going for seven total days, so about midnight Eastern Standard Time. Just shy of 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time here. Hope we finish the rest of this session strong. Up about 9.56, say a little under five buy-ins. And reminder, I'll be offline tomorrow, but back on Sunday for the first tournament stream of the year because it's scoop time. So playing the next three Sundays of MTTs. You guys can see the schedule here. Got some no limit events off and running. I know Jay Mack was in the chat earlier. Sounds like he was in the eight game mix. Also got the progressive knockout event going. 100 for the high, 30 for the medium, 10 for the low. 
for anyone interested in getting in the mix there. Uh, Garrett asking, are you playing Zoom? No. So I I play in the U.S. fenced in pool between the states of Michigan, New Jersey, and PA, Pennsylvania. Um, and we do not have Zoom tables. We just have rag tables. So I only play rag tables. Raise ace 10, see the defend, bet flop here, king 8, 6, 2 spades. See the fold. Folding over here, we got small blind open. I call Jack Jack three. A small bet call, pretty big turn. Already return the ace. Check turn five river. We get Jack to go for value. And if they bet most sizes just call pretty quickly. Over bet I at least think about, but I think would probably call it an ace is played. As long as it's like pot and half with like two X probably lean more holds, but small bet. I'm just gonna call pretty quick. Get the rest of the queen high there. River is set here, open, bet flop, check turn, bet river. Good risk ace five. So they turn two pair, we river the set. Nice little river card, not a huge pop, but we'll take those. King suited. Open with three bet, hold four bet. Um, I suited off some flats. I'm trying to think on the flat here, Jam. I'm gonna flat this time. Then 4 3 2, I'm probably gonna be pretty aggressive on. Now, it's tough with these cold 4 bet pots because it doesn't feel like we have a lot of fold equity. So maybe it depends on like the size here. So if he goes big size, we just get it in. If they go for a check. Actually, gonna check here. Queen turn, not ideal. So I actually think I'll start bluffing the turn if we get checked too, trying to fold out like jacks or tens potentially. And if he bets call to. Bluff River. This one's a little bit weird. We do block aces. Suit's not the greatest here. He checks, I think we go for it, but. We'll have like Ace Queen suited, my most likely hand here. Definitely have in this line. I don't think we're gonna get aces to fold, but I do you think if he has like jacks or something? Actually, he hasn't bet those actually. <sighs> block aces key. Sorry, change my mind. Checking out. Same hand. I don't know there. It's weird because if I don't bluff that, I'm not bluffing anything. But then I was also starting to think like he doesn't have Jack's betting turn. Maybe he does. I don't know. 
weird one. Because like I said, if I don't bluff that, I'm just like bluffing nothing, which is a problem. Not 100% sure there. What I like. Raise ace queen, three bets, we call, flop, we got shot here. Checks to me. I think we'll start bluffing with this one. I don't hate check back though. I think bit more betting on the spade because there's more rounds I can bluff here. That way I'm not just betting ace queen every time. That turn spade river, I would definitely bluff. I think on other ones, they send a folding though. Probably would want more of like the 10x than if we're. But, anyways, that turn, get it through. Open flat, call the sevens here. Check in. And fold there. Button open here, defend day six suited, check and flop on nine five three. Jump over here with kings. Open here, three bet kings, calls. Queen eight three, two hearts. And go for half pot. And see the quick fold there. We have lots of games running on the site at the moment. We've got 12, 200 games. So you see the cash game still rocking and rolling during coop here. Or asking uh, how are you doing and where are you playing so i'm doing good uh playing on poker stars usa so it's available in the states of michigan new jersey and pennsylvania if you're outside the u.s there are a lot of other countries that have like a dot-com pool or different fenced in pool markets as well so yeah playing in the poker stars usa player pool i live in michigan so i play in the michigan new jersey are one player pool and then pennsylvania has their own player pool too software looks the same lobbies look the same it's just different players in the pool. And we do have a nice stack over here. Got the 1k stack.
We intend suit here, cutoff opens, we defend, check flop. Hope ISO is saying a few. Yeah, because unfortunately we got that we got that one through, but yeah, it, like I said, the problem is if I don't bluff that, I just don't know what I'm bluffing at all. Maybe Ace Jack suited, I guess. What I call that? Yeah, I guess I could have that. Maybe. Maybe that's the one bluff then. Interesting hand though. <laughs> Three of us said few as I'm glad you checked out the Ace King, exactly. Yeah, because if I jam there, he just folds, so. Ugh. Didn't pull the trigger. Jack 10 suited open here, get called, go for the bet. Here we're playing the battle of the chicken outs, right? <laughs> Neither of us pulled the trigger on the river. Uh, I was so bad at myself too because I had told myself, all right, I'm gonna bluff if he checks, but then you checked and I didn't do it. Uh, I think this was I bet flop get led into the turn, so I'll call the spades. And then I think I would bluff river here if he checks. This time I think I'm gonna actually stick to it. <laughs> So if he has like 5-4 that gets counterfeit, it actually could be a, come a good bluff jam, but he's probably going to be tough to call here on the end. I mean, to be fair, there are some flush draws I miss in like hands like I have now, but I could have to match his best bluff would be the 5-4, but I could also just have like a boat too, going for a check raise on the river too, but so I take a bet here. Not 100% sure I love this, but you decide to bluff this time. So if I have like an ace high miss flush, I'd probably check because we beat some other flush draws, whereas jack high would try to play like king high and ace high flush draws. Um, also, if he had just had like ace six or ace seven, something like that too. If I had like a straight draw that missed. So I don't want to bet like all my missed flush draws, but use the ones that have like lower high cards. Fold. Probably not getting check raised when he's going down this far, so I was just hoping for a fold. We do get it. Nice. Bluff gets through. Decorn saying good night and good luck. Thank you, Decorn. Appreciate it. Hope the session was a good one for you. Decorns that try to have a DK night and settle for four buy-ins maybe one day. You know what's crazy, Decorn? Today, as of right now, would be my worst session this week, and I'm five buy-ins up. Oh my gosh. Still gotta finish strong, but it's been... Wow, what a week. So open eights can get called, check the eight six five. Uh I get small we'll call one here, not like thrilled about it. Queen turn. I think if I turn this into a bluff on the river. Maybe. If they as if they check, if they bet we're just gonna fold.
to nine sit over here. Button open here, three at ten nine suited, take it down. Lots of guys, how much you end up paying taxes? So the US tax bracket, it can be a little complicated. So in the state I live in, there's a state income tax, which is 4.25%. So whatever my profit is on my business for a year. So that includes like my playing and my um content side. Pay 4.25% to the state. Every state's different. Some have 0%. Some have as high as like, I think California is like maybe like 10%. Um, and then federally, there's, it's a, a progressive tax bracket. So the more money you make, the higher percentage you pay. So like everybody pays the same percent on the first, like whatever, 15,000 or 30,000. But then it's like, as you get up higher, the, the extra amount of money you make, it's taxed a higher percent. So it's not just like a flat rate across the board. It's complicated. But yeah, you have to, re if you're in New York, so you're in the US, you have to report all your earnings um, like you're supposed to. So like I report literally every session. You only get tax forms for like certain events, right? Like it's usually like a certain threshold for dollars won in a tournament or something like that. Uh, but for me, like I said, I report everything. So it's, you know, I have my tax forms, but then I track everything. I look an Excel file throughout the year, every session, all my wins, all my losses, and then have it at the end of the year together. So I got open, threw out the ace-five suit to take it down. King-queen over here, check through flop and turn, about the queen river, see the fold. Check raising the queen two here against bet. Call. Slow down the turn here once they call. Club river. I'm not gonna try to make, make a huge fold here. An ace. Could try to get him to fold like a pocket pair or something, but let it go. Open 10 8 here, get called. Flop a double gutter and a 10 any 7. Or sorry, any jack any 7. And just do the fold. Jack opens, so they sense suited. So, see the call, huge flop. Huge, huge flop here. So, we flop top two, he's 10 5 rainbow. Massive turn card over here. We got two big pots potentially going on. Uh, so let's check, check, and then I'm gonna check call the river here. Bluff catch of the straight coming in when the club's coming in. And 
has bluff ace, fourth ace, clubs. We're good. Beautiful. Ace 10 on the other tail. We just uh, took it down with a flop C bet. Cut off open here. We threw it. Queen Jack suited. Here, sadly, a sixes. So, bets flat multi way, two couple calls, and then turn. There's a check raise. So, once there's that, we're out. That was so it's up machine. How about five hundred? When will we be come back? Uh, I don't need plans anytime soon at the moment. Long term, you know, if like by the end of the year, maybe consider it. But if I just continue to do really well over, like say, uh, like most of the year. But again, last year's results were pretty poor. So just like trying to get lots of volume in, and like I, said, I think there's a huge jump from like the two hundred to five hundred games. So you know, kind of want to be like really sure I'm going to go that route before I do. But I'm at the moment just kind of like really happy grinding out the, the 200. Things are going well and try and keep doing that. that pot here gonna bluff the river Let's see the fold so open get three bets go for the four bet here so this is pretty strong formation on again small blinds this will be our last hand at this table no matter what happens for the record <laughs> I have a 200 game that came up to the fold oh shoot it wasn't because i didn't hit sit out next hand all right well i guess i'll do one more orbit <laughs> that game do one more orbit so cut off open here this player sitting out with three ready queen two to take it down Let's take it. I'm going to open here. We're going to flat the bottom of sixes. Flop the set, jeez. Flop the set. And I get a player leading. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and raise here. Balls for turn. Text probably pretty big jam. Sizing's a little bit awkward here. All right, with three quarters. Hopefully, it's had like ace nine here. We're just gonna stack them. Ace 
five on the end. Seven, eight comes in. I don't know that they would call twice though, unless it was heart. So I think at this point, she's only half pot behind. We're just gonna jam for the rest. Hope they decide to, sometimes players do stylize will flat ace, king ace, queen sometimes, and then take this line. So nines would be pretty ugly after we just have set over set, but go for the jam on the end. Let's see the call, ace, jack. Let's go, sixes are good. Get paid with set. Uh, let's see, do we have all these tables set up? Yeah, okay, we're good. Basic 5 4 suited. Uh, so after a couple hands there, we're plus 1283 today, guys. Plus Hey, AG, coming through with the raid. Appreciate you, buddy. Always oh, good to see you here. Hope the first night of PA Scoop went well for you. So I'm sure you guys already know, AG, if you don't somehow, though, the newest member of the Poker News Ambassador Squad. Very, very well deserved. Super nice guy. I've had a chance to meet AG in person. We were at the PSPC in the Bahamas. Really good tournament stream. If you guys like mixed games especially, there's not a lot of streamers that'll play the events besides the No Limit events, but AG is playing No Limit and all the other events which is perfect for a series like Scoop because there's a lot of mixed games that are going on. So if you guys are looking for some good action over in PA, because again, people have been asking about tournaments since I'm not going to play many of the terms, just going to be grinding cash. Definitely be sure to get AG a follow. Hope the stream was a good one. Let us know how it went. If you're able to stick around. I'd appreciate it. Let me know how it went. Uh, for anyone new here, welcome. My name is David member of PokerStars Team Pro over here in the U.S. So I play in the U.S. Fenced in Player Pool in the states of Michigan, New Jersey. So similar to where AG is playing on the Stars PA Pool, I am playing in the Michigan, New Jersey Pool. Mostly play cash games though. So like I said, I'll be I'll be playing the three Coop Sundays, but I'm not going to be playing the rest of the series. Still going to be playing on stream a lot, just going to be playing cash games, which is my main game. I actually haven't played a single tournament this year yet, so I'm going to be a bit rusty going in the scoop. But uh, yeah, just on the grind tonight. And uh, I've got four tables going as usual. Turn it out if you ever want to have sessions going. White section below the webcam. And uh, this has been probably the hottest week I've ever had of cash games. I have my first four days. I won 3K, 1.2, 1.4, and I think like 1.8 or 1.9 yesterday. And today we're up like 1,200. So it's been uh, an insane heater this week. Just as far as you're saying, the week keeps going on. I know it's insane. 
So yeah, if you guys are ever wondering, you don't see comments or stuff in the chat, I'm, I'm multi-stream on both Twitch and YouTube, so I'm doing the exact same stream on both platforms. You don't need to watch on both. Just choose whichever one you prefer, obviously, is the easiest. Appreciate the support either way. Uh, so I try to read the comments and stuff, but if you see like Twitch raids and you're like, what's a Twitch raid if you're watching on YouTube? It's just basically um, a fellow streamer sending their uh, community on over after their stream wraps up for the evening. So yeah, I'll be, I'll be playing for seven hours tonight. We're about a little under five and a half hours in, so I got about an hour and a half left. Uh, most of my streams, I've been, I used to do daytime cash games. I've been doing nighttime cash games since the beginning of the year. And uh, most of my streams have been starting at 5. I'm going to start kicking that back to 6 p.m. And then do like probably 6 to midnight schedule, but sometimes go the extra hour for the 7 still. Give a little flexibility there. Uh, it kind of probably depends too on like how many days I'm streaming that week. So like next week I'm streaming 6 out of 7 days. So might not be uh, going more than the 6, but just on the grind. Of course, it was that one to flush. But yeah, it's been a... Really good session here for us, as G-Man saying, upswing, upswing indeed. I was telling chat earlier, it's like, I've just been like logging out every day, I'm like, alright, I'm just gonna get crushed today, I'm just like so overdue to get lit up. It's like, oh, the downswing's gotta start at some point, it's just like, it just keeps going, like, it's not even just this week, like this year I've run really, really well, and uh, things have been good. Might be dusting off some money in these scoop events, but we'll see how it goes. So I'm probably gonna play, uh, like I said, I'll be playing the three Sundays, so... Each this week there's gonna be the hundred dollar Sunday special championship, which is the event I won in the fall. It was a two hundred that series. Won it for twenty nine K. So we're gonna try to defend our title there. It's gonna be over twelve hundred runners with the guarantee, so it's gonna be a lot of people in there. Also, the biggest blind tomorrow will be the two hundred or Sunday, sorry, will be the two hundred dollar second chance. So I'll be playing that. Uh that'll be my biggest buy in of the day. And then the two hundred PKO championship. The following Sunday, and then the main event's a $300 main. So I'll have a 300 and two 200s to play as far as buy-ins, and then everything else I'll be playing is probably going to be 100 and under. So I've played very few tournaments for like the last five months since last coop. So I played the NAPT in Vegas. I played that main event for an entry, and then I played a couple of bullets and some other stuff. Uh, Final Table above the Mystery Bounty 1K. Played the 550 Cup. Um... And then I played, I think I've played like two tournament streams in the last five months. And that's about it, so. Yeah, I've been uh, going to be a bit rusty going into the tournaments, but hopefully if the sun run carries over at any capacity, we'll be all right. So, okay, say so the 10k month so far, nice. I mean, yeah, it's been pretty insane only for like five days in. <laughs> like I said, I'm, I'm pretty calm. This is my best cash game week ever. This has been crazy. Okay, oh, you're saying like 10k per month for the year. Yeah, I, mean, I guess we are on that pace, yeah. Pretty wild. Like I said, if I had to have a financial goal coming here, I would say to beat last year's number. So like say round up to like 60k, so I'd have to average like 5k a month. So to be uh, doubling that up at the moment, it's a good start for sure. Open, get three bet, flat 98 student position. We get a pretty big flop here. Pair, gutter, spades. Uh, it goes for a check here. We're going to go ahead and bet. If they check raise, I'm trying to think if we just jam here. If, uh, I don't know. It doesn't feel like there's a lot of full equity if they check raise. I mean, we're pretty live against over pairs, even though. We'd have the nine, the eight, the six. Spade. Uh, here we pick up a double gutter, brings it over. I'll probably check this one once they just call. Take the river. And then hit two pair. Um, the 10 and the 6 both make it straight, though. I think a medium two pair, if they check here, I'm going to make a nittier check. Actually, with the turn checking through. All right, this is going to be a bit unbalanced. Excuse me, I'm going to go for a small bite here, trying to target their over pairs. To be fair, they probably don't. Yeah, actually, I don't like it. Because they're probably not going to just check all Aces, Kings. Okay. Yeah, I'm not sure on that one. Anyways, Obadiah Stein suited. Get three bet we call. <laughs> I 
<laughs> AG said thanks for the shout out. Love the Coop series because I get to see you drag kicking, <laughs> drag kicking and screaming into MTTs as well. Good luck, thank you. No, I'm actually, uh, I actually like tournaments more than most cash game players. There's a lot of cash game players that like despise tournaments, but I actually think they're fun. I just get frustrated because I don't know what I'm doing a lot more often. <laughs> People would argue that's how I'm in cash, but I, uh, especially knockout tournaments, man, they're so hard for me to play. <laughs> like the regular tournaments, I can at least carry some stuff over from cash games. Um, I was talking, I've been talking about it a lot recently, though. I think it's becoming harder and harder as a cash game player just to take your knowledge base to MTTs than it used to be. Because I think there's so much more knowledge on ICM and then like short stack play and stuff and like playing the shorter stacks like a bit differently. Where it's just like really, really hard. Um, now again, like I don't mind getting there. Coop, it's a lot of fun. Can sun run like I did last series. There is some stuff that carries over, but uh, it can be difficult. And then like the bounty tournaments is just like, that's another one that's just like, it's fun to try to chase the bounties, but man, I have never felt so, the most loss I've ever felt playing poker is always a knockout tournament in PKOs. Like mystery bounties, I at least like, I still feel lost, but I'm like, okay, everybody's value is like roughly the same. It's like the average value of the bounty. And then, but man, the PKOs, I am just like wild, wild west guessing out there for me. All right, so we open Ace King almost every, well, everybody behind us does call. So we open in four calls behind us. I can see this very often. Yeah, Poker Pez here, good to see it. Must be all me because I haven't been able to watch really since the first live event. I haven't been able to watch really. Oh, the run good. <laughs> Keep stacking the chips. Yeah, yeah. Poker Pez, I appreciate you being here. I won't hold it against you. Been watching all this week, though. Hey, I appreciate that support. We'll give you uh, give you some credit here. Uh, this feels really nitty to fold. I'd probably go for the check call here as long as this isn't a raise, but it does feel like we're kind of just drawing to the 10 here sometimes. i reverse some play outs on the ace and the king. So I'm going to call here. The turn, I mean, they can still have diamond draws in like 8, 9, 9, 10, but again, this many ways, it becomes probably a little more value heavy than normal. Love to see a free river. Opposite of free river. Big bets. Uh, football blast wise, PA not include Michigan, New Jersey. So they have to join what's called the interstate compact. The state has to sign it where they're allowed to play in the same player pool. So AG has actually been leading, uh, I'm trying to think of the correct word. Um, we'll say leading the charge and like trying to get that push through. So he's been setting up people in the group in the PA community, trying to like you know call and email the uh, people in the the PA house that can have influence over that. And I think it's technically up for vote, or it's going to be up for vote. So hopefully, some good movement there. Mayhem. Ah, he got the money in good and they got there. GG's. Good finish on the second place finish, though. Always excited to make those deep runs. Tilting to, like, have such a deep run and catch a bluff, but then they get there. But congrats on the deep run. <laughs> Jams, I don't know if you remember, but I'm a math genius. And by my calculations, you're on pace to make the year-end profit of $31 million. I mean, Jam, if I made $31 million in a year, that would be legendary. I would settle for $3.1 million, <laughs> but 31, next level. All right, over here, call pre-flop. Decide to check, I'm maybe supposed to bet out turn instead of check calling, but I was played will call. Eight river, I'd consider bluff jamming against some bets here. They check back at nine though. No good for us. Uh, button open here, three bet this for suited. Take it down pre.
Limp raise, couple calls behind. Raise the flop. Top two, pretty connected board though. I think we still want to bet this. So I see the call from Leslie. Raise, so it's not a huge raise. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to think what I want to do here. I think I raise small to try to go against this player, hoping Leslie doesn't have a lot of these monsters. If Leslie puts any more money in, we're just going to be like really shutting down, unless we had a king or queen, because his range would become super, super strong. Really strong, like straights, and, or straights and like flush draws. So yeah, that's not a good one. Now it becomes a disaster if this player jams, because I don't really want to call off with Leslie in there. <laughs> Oh boy. Alright, so it doesn't reopen the action. So I guess we can call here, but this doesn't feel very good. Leslie should probably play pretty straight up here, I would think, on rivers. Like, not bluffing much with them in. If this reopened the action, would be so... Oh shoot, it did, because I could... I'm such an idiot. Ugh. Oh my gosh, I had the best hand. Or no, that player is 10. <laughs> uh, I would have beat Leslie. No, he would have river 2 pair. Shoot, that was such an idiot thing from me. I should have folded the turn. I was thinking it didn't reopen the action, but clearly it did because I had the option to raise. Ah, uh, all right. Anyways, folded the top two there. So the basic problem there is like in the big line, Leslie's just gonna have like a lot of straights continue or like the huge draw. So like exactly like it had like the ace high flush draw the gutter. So it's like that case where still a lot of outs against us or we're just like really bad shape. Like I said, I think once, I could have just called the raise the 20. But I, th I think Leslie's going to have a lot of folds there. So, like, I don't mind getting versus the short stack. Yeah, I don't know. Like I said, I once I really butchered missing the fact that Leslie could rejam then. That was a mistake on my part. Anyways, not my best hand. <laughs> not going on. Not going to be one of my best played hands, but. You know, they happen. Here with Ace-Jack suited, we're going to be opening a couple calls, top pair, top kicker with the flush draw. And then, let's see, I'm going to go into that turn as well. If I had Ace-Jack without spades, I'd consider some checks multi-way here. And then as played, I th think I'm going to bet River here, hoping they have like Queen-Jack, King-Jack that calls enough here. Let's see the fold. Here to assert a very good run. Stay in the line, this line. I'm hoping. I'm hoping. Um, AG said grassroots move. There we go. All right. I was like, I, I don't, I'm not sure the exact term here, but basically, yeah, trying to get a movement going of getting people to advocate for getting the market merged. So yeah, the way it worked, poker pads, like it first, they'd have to sign the interstate compact, and then there's probably stuff that happens has to happen behind the scenes on the sites. And I don't know like what determines what would or would not merge. So for example, Michigan, when they signed the interstate compact, we didn't merge with New Jersey for like maybe six months later, if I remember correctly. And then like in some other sites, they just haven't merged at all, even though it's been there for Michigan specifically. So I, you know, I'm not really sure what goes into everything like that. It's not something I'm kept up to date on. It's not really my business or my job to know. It's just more of like if stuff actually, once it happens, then I'm aware. Open, cut off, button three bets, putting the four bet here. And eight, six, three. Go for half pot here. See the full bluff gets through. Need to check on the spot of like what hands I should be betting. Like, maybe say if I have like some ace, ten, ace, jack suited with the backdoor flush draws, use that instead of ace, king, o. But, anyways. Open fours here, big line defends, check in, king on the turn. And check turn as well, queen river. Block size we call, bigger sizes. Eh, I don't know. I haven't bet anything with a pair here. Have a diamonds. Not ah, thrilled, but I'll call getting three to one here. Oof, fives just barely outpips me. Uh, I feel owned, chat. I feel owned. Not a huge pop, but that's that one's. They got me exactly where they wanted me.
Queen Jack open. See the call here. We're gonna bet top pair on Queen Ten Six. Go bet call five turn. We'll check the top pair on the turn, and then Ace to River. I'm gonna check the check call. Base bets. That checks down. We're good. Raise nine seven suited. Defend in the double paired sixes here. We doing a live check versus big blind. Interesting turn. Actually, no, sorry. It's the same gutter that we had already anyways. So we have the gut shot of the spades. Um, small size I would consider raising here. And then once we get checked to, we'll bet. River, probably not good to be blocking multiple nest draws, so we'll just give up on this one. Got Ramin in the chat saying like and subscribe. Good to see you, Ramin. Appreciate it. So yeah, if you guys are watching on YouTube, it really helps the channel and the stream grow on the YouTube side. If you can like and subscribe to the channels, I'd appreciate it if you're enjoying the stream. Trying to grow the YouTube uh, streaming side. It's still pretty new. I mean, it's four months in, basically. I'd say really, like, I think I started in November. It was, like, end of November, so it's, like, really been, like, December in the first three months this year. So about four months of streaming on both platforms. But it's been fun, enjoyable. A lot more people finding the stream since uh, gaining people on YouTube too for the stream. So appreciate everybody watching. So some jamming, not going to 100% of the time, but yeah, there's sometimes. Yeah, it may have, sometimes, I mean, I'm not, like I said, I'm not very good at turns, but when your head's up, a lot of times stacks are shorter, so it's hard to be, like, waiting for better spots. You kind of just have to take the spots that are good as you get them, I feel like. But again, I could be completely wrong on that, because I'm uh, not a tournament player. <laughs> not very studied in MTTs. That feels like a G for call. I mean, that that's pretty sick feeling. You call ace high, heads up for the t for the win. Sad it hold, but that's pretty sick to call me right. So continue to fold a little bit. And we've got about hour 15 left tonight. We're going for seven hours. Offline tomorrow, then scoop Sunday. Breaking off the MTT rest on Sunday. Jack 10 suited, short stack calls in the big line here. Leads for pot, just be folding.
Cut off open serial threat and jack nine suited. So three back get called. Uh, King Jack seven. Actually, I should have been up out there. Anyways, has play with check. <laughs> seven turn, has play check. And then eight on the river. Probably would call against most sizes if I play this check otherwise. That yeah, could be. Actually, I think I change of minds. Queens, they probably four bet pre. King actually probably puts some bet out here. Chopping. We only really lose an ace jack. I feel like we're valuing ourselves against most of the time here. Try and get like some small pair to level themselves into a call. I'd say rip, eh, river 9 8, we do block one of the combos, but. So, again, I like betting flop, but as play, we'll bet river here for value with the jack. Hoping they like call like sixes, fives, fours, just put me on ace high. But, anyways, see the fold. Open, flat, flat, call the fours here. And go ahead and check queen jack seven. Take that down, ace queen over here. We got under good open, defend the ace queen here, check and jack eight two, two clubs. And check here. Pair plate set of things that I'm good luck for is that I seem to win when I'm playing while you're playing, not against you, but just in general. Apparently, maybe you're my good luck then too. <laughs> We've been playing. Maybe it's uh we both just run good. We're playing at the same time and everybody else runs bad. Uh pair plate also mentioned maybe your commentary forced me to think and not go on autopilot. Hey, maybe there's something there. How many tails do you play usually? I will say, like, it's kind of been one, like, I still think I'm giving up EV on the tables for sure, streaming, giving up, like, my strategy and stuff, but I do think the fact that, like, I, like, talk through, like, 
all my spots makes me like really narrow in and think about it and like you said I not go on autopilot as much as might otherwise like forces me to justify to myself like why I'm doing what I'm doing might not be right but at least you know justifying why I'm choosing to do it you know Oh, he's queen suited. Get called here in a bet flop. Ace king four. And this is the fold. Just gonna check down Jack here and this King High. Raise Jack by suited. Call here. Check, check. I gotta check turn. And then King on the river and a bluff small on the river. King of spades. The call King Jack. Definitely not getting that fold. Uh, just asked when it comes to fold to see bet what percentage would you say i actually this is really bad i don't know this but i'm not really quite sure where the threshold would be at but i definitely should know that to be honest uh, so if anyone in chat has some suggestions for jason or ideas let us know Opening eights here, big one defends. Go ahead and bet 10 4 3. So, bet call, huge turn card. And I'm gonna go over, over bet turn. So, these are spots when, if we're like 100 bigs effective, I'll usually go like 2x or check. But when we're like really deep, I'm going less, which might sound counterintuitive, but it's because I'm not trying to play jams on the river this deep. Then, like, the over bet still goes huge here. King's over here. Uh, 
Oh, pair plays. I usually place four tables. Okay, so yeah, you're similar to me then. I play four as well. Hey, what's up, Lord? Good to see ya. Said David, what's up, goat? Way too kind. I appreciate it. Though. Good to see it here. Hope your night's been going well. Oops. Actually, I raised the two big ones here. And to make it two and a half, it doesn't matter mattering. We have hijack open, three by the cutoff. So we threw back call, nine, seven, four, two spades. We got ace, king, no spade here. So go ahead and check. Take the turn, a queen of hearts of the turn. So I think I might start using ace, king as a bluff on this turn card. And, or now nah, I changed my mind check here, maybe incorrect. Just gonna jump down those other table with three betting kings if I could get there in time. Alright, looks like it was a fold anyways. Back to the ace king hand here. Uh do we ever call? I mean we do beat some like high card hands. I mean, bets river here is basically a queen or seven. I think I'm actually gonna make a sticky call here. Tens. That was a good value bet there. Gets me on the end. Maybe a little sticky. Too sticky for me there. Maybe too sticky. Hijack opens through that cutoff king queen, take it down pretty quickly. This time we have the tens over here. Uh, Steph Cho asking any tips for playing low stakes? Yes, I think like just getting a very, you know, good understanding of theory. Just get like, you know, try to work on the spots that come up a lot. Don't do too, you know, try to overthink too many of the complex spots. Just like really try to get down like your your basic core fundamentals. And then also if you're playing on a site that allows a HUD, I definitely recommend getting one, especially at like low stakes, because a lot of players be different playing styles. So it's nice to uh, really be able to hone in on which players are which type of players. Tens over here with three bet squeeze. And a call versus half out is actually a really good turn card. Less likely to have a king and we block some spades uh, draws. And then as play, this is a very clear river call. If they check here. Ah, uh, this is thin. I don't think they're going to... They went call, call, so they probably don't have queens or jacks. I'm going to try and target an eight here. Or maybe just make some like big hero. It's only like a little bit more behind, so they might call like a lot of pairs if they decide to bet those. So I'm going to go for the value bet here at tens. And we see the fold. Probably about like ace eight plus there. And eh, I don't know, maybe do check back. So even like nines could be in the range there too, but anyways, we take it down. Go to tens. Liner comes in on the turn. We'll check. So we do pick up a spade draw too. Uh, do I turn my hand to a bluff or just check? I think we're just gonna check here. They bet we'll probably fold. Let it go. Could be kind of sick to raise there actually if they check. They probably don't jack very often. In hindsight, yeah, I kind of like I kind of like the idea of raise. Now the question is, would I ever check a jack on the river? Though I don't know. Limp, we raise, get called. We're gonna check top pair, multi-way opposition against two people on Queen Jack 8. These not bad turns, but 
It's a pretty good one. I mean, really picky. You prefer it not being a diamond or heart, but... And then as played, I think, in this good river card, we go for value still. Snap bolt to take it down. Check clock, check turn, check the nine river, and unfortunately a two pair. No good for us. So button open here, defend queen six suited, flop the flush draw. Uh, check, check, gonna go ahead and over about turn. And see the fold. Hey, what's up, money BLK? Good to see you in the chat tonight. Hope you're well. Session going pretty good. We're up about 1,200. It's been a really big week as well, so things are good. How you doing? Did you get a chance to play any of the PA Scoop events tonight? And if you did, how's it? Uh, how did it either go, or if you're in some still, how's it going? Hijack open a player sitting out. We threw Ace Queen suited. Um, eight full in this pre, but I don't think we have any calls when they go to 92 here. So either jam or fold, and I think we're just gonna be folding out of gun versus big blinds. Pretty consider just calling this pre too, but most of the time, say they go like 50 or 55, we can call against 4 bet, but not going to against 92. Open King Queen here, get called, you know, and bet 10 10 8. Check turn here on the two. So against third, I would consider calling King High. Um, half Potter Bigger will fold though. So I'm gonna get a bit sticky here with this King Queen. And then I actually might consider check raising where wrist played. Kind of sick. Um, I guess I'd want to. Oh, the board's paired. I block Queen Jack, which is nice though. Want to be a little careful over bets. So yeah, we definitely want to have a boat blocker here, so we'll let it go.
Judge will ask out of curiosity where does medium stakes end and high stakes begin? Is uh, 10 and uh, or 100 and considered high stakes online? No, I'd say, I think from what I hear, like talking to other people on like dot com pools, usually it's like probably 1k NL entire high stakes. I think in the US, I would argue 500 is in the fenced in pool because it's like a lot of the same players. So I would say if I had to give the how I would rate, I would say 500 plus is high stakes in the US, maybe like 100 to. 100 and 200 and i'll be mid stakes and then maybe like 25 and 50 be low stakes and then like 10 and l and under be micro stakes that's how i would say in the u.s pool is probably i would cipher it so again so i'd say micro stakes up 10 and l small stakes 25 and 50 and l mid stakes 100 and 200 so like the games i play and then high stakes like 500 and l plus for the u.s pool like I think on the dot com side, maybe high stakes would be more like at like 1k plus, but. Raising up 7 6 suited, couple calls open under backdoor diamonds. That flop call. Do an over bet turn here. Let's see the fold. I've got about 50 minutes left tonight. And as soon as it's a misclick here, I'm just going to play as a call. Top, top here. Checks through, check turn here. And go for the block on the river. And see the call, lose the 7 2. So yeah, misclick. <laughs> but unfortunately for us, that's probably an enter too, because it's like. It is a raise, whereas folds on the far left side. It's too bad for us, but anyways. No 7-deuce game on this one. Open, flat, call these 10 here. Full multi-way. Get the walk seven six suited. Cut off open here, three button king tens, two different button. And see the fold. Uh, no scoop for money BLK today, because it's mostly mixed games, but currently three of 22 and a bounty, a mystery bounty, but nice, good luck to you. Already made two bounties for 56 bucks, very good. Keep us updated on it. Hopefully, it continue getting the bounties running deep. Are you planning on playing a lot of the scoop series coming up, Money BLK? And if so, besides the main event, do you have like any like an event or two that you've seen on the schedule that you're really excited for? Tight check on the river, but we do.
Probably ten suited, can three bet as well. Small size call to the river check. Return, sorry, not the river. <laughs> Helps if I remember what order the uh, the cards go. And then here on the river, I think we just go big bet. I'm probably playing mostly big better check when the board double pairs like this. Sometimes we'll doubt ourselves against like aces, kings, queens, jacks, but I think we can still get called by like nines, eights, seven, sixes. Also, if they there's some straight draws that miss as well as a flush draw, so they could just call it like ace highs too. Anyways, take it down. Raise and queen jack suited, big blind defense here. Check back the 862 ace on the turn. Checks here, going that turn. Ball's pretty quick. Uh non clubber run a bluff. Hope they don't have an ace. Snap calls. Well they didn't have an ace, but they still had hands calling, so bluff no good there with Queen Jack. Evil Empire said, David, 1k a day, k. <laughs> I know, that's the direction we've been going in, right? It's been crazy. Today's my worst day this week so far. It's 1.1k profit. <laughs> Can't even finish saying that without laughing. Up down here with 3-button. We got limp raise. We 3-bet ace-queen. See the fold. Queen 3 suited limp pot here. We're going to bet out with a flush draw on the paired board. And then board double pairs. We'll check on the board double pair. Not ideal. Probably just check fold here. If they check, we hit the flush. I'd probably check river and hope to give them a chance to bluff some like smaller pairs or something. Um, uh, I try to get them off a chop here. All right, this is hoping they don't have a ten or a nine split. This is maybe a mistake because I guess there's only one nine left. So I thought a ten or nine, they're probably gonna fold this. So get an extra like five dollars fifty cents. So it, the times there, for example. <laughs> That we end up valuing ourselves. Is it worth it? I don't know. Maybe go pot and a half, not 2x pot there. Got Nicholas in the chat. What's up, Nicholas? Good to see you. Maybe a little greedy. I'll still have like my pairs that probably want to go for value there. Like, let's say I have. Eh, I guess no jacks and stuff. The 10, I don't think they have super often. I'd probably still go for it with like the. Oh no, it's a limp pot. Never mind. I'm not going to have basis or jacks. UCT, another day, another 1k. I know it's been, uh, I've got to still hold, but it's like right on at the moment, 1088. But it's been winning session to this point. Winning session to this point. Stopfest said it's been a banging run up the last couple weeks. Fun to watch. Keep it going. Thank you, Stopfest. I'm going to try and keep this going as long as we can. <laughs> I'm hoping it carries over into Scoop on Sunday. Defend my Sunday championship title. I'm actually like really excited for it. For the Scoop series. It's like nice to like still be like on the cash grind mostly. Um, and like especially how things have been going. Like I, I would actually feel pretty bad if I was taking a break from cash for like two and a half weeks after this week, but um i'm like excited for like the three days and like the big days right like the big sundays the big main event on the 21st it's like the i think it's like the perfect blend like let me get in the mix on the sundays and otherwise just keep grinding cash like we have been
Nice, Money BLK playing to be prominent in the Scoop series. Playing a lot of it. Looking forward to PKO tournaments. I remember all the final tables I made is one thing in common. Is they're all been PKOs. Interesting. So you're sounds like I need to get some tips from you then, because I feel lost in PKOs. I feel much better in like regular tournaments, like regular tournaments. PKOs, I start to struggle a little bit with what to do. Watch this all on flip over here. Ace King Queens. Queens hasn't done the turn of the flop set. Pretty deep with this player now too. About 150 bigs effective. Everybody else pretty close to starting. Evil Empire also going to be grinding the scoop series. Nice, good to hear. So Evil Empire, I'll ask you the same question. Besides the main event, because obviously a lot of people are excited for that. Is there any other like particular events you're excited for, whether it's any of the mixed games events or maybe just like bounty tournaments in general? Maybe like I don't are they doing any of like the uh the different style of bounties instead of just PKOs, like where it's like winner take all or win I think I saw a win the button tournament. That's different. There's a zoom tournament. So a few different uh structures in there and get a little variety. I think that's one of the big draws of Coop a lot of times. Like especially people like mixed games, there's a lot you know a lot more of those and you're just seeing and then also like a little bit of a different variety in games too. Why would I see what's tracking software to use? I use Hold a Manager 3. Hold a Manager 3. Okay, button open here. 3 bet the Ace 4 suited. So open eight seven here, check and flop eight five two. And I'm gonna go ahead and check turn. So go for a check call here. Three river check. We do have a club, which is good. Be leaning towards call probably, and they end up checking. We're good. Good reverse ace high. So they missed their gut shot by river to three ace three. Open jack ten suited. Three bet we flat, flop top pair. So checks to me. I'm gonna go ahead and check back. Betting obviously fine as well. Five on the turn, go small turn bet. Double flush draw. And then eight on the river. Nitty river check is maybe way too tight. Ace king high. There's some flush, two flush draws. Yeah, I don't know. Feels a bit tight there. GCT said I didn't even see the comment about mine. Yeah, everybody's talking about me winning 1k every day. That's when you know it's, it's ridiculous how often it's happening. Most people are thinking the same thing. Uh, Money BLK hits like currently 6 of 16. Nice. PA, another thing for PA Scoop. Money BLK is looking forward to playing the very end in the main event. Oh, yeah. Catching like a bad... I mean, it's... Uh, Playing the main event, it's like exciting because like for me, it's like that's like outside of like when I play the 25k PSPC, like the $300 online main is like my biggest tournament of the year for me. Realist, not buy-in wise, but like, you know, like the prestige of like trying to win scoop title, especially as like an online streamer. Like that's, you know, if I could make a run in the scoop main or the coop main in the fall, like that'd be sick, especially on stream. Like even winning those two events last year, the, the Sunday special championship was huge. So I think it was probably like the third biggest first place prize of the series, if not maybe the second. So that was sick to win, but remember what the 2.5k the paid but anyways that was uh but yeah the swings of the main event it's like you only get it twice a year right so it's like you really want to run well in that tournament and all your hopes come down to two days for the year for those biggest ones
open. Couple calls here. Eight two two three on the turn. So it checks through me betting or calling here. So we'll go ahead and call. I hate raising versus. Eh, actually, no. If they were small blind, this is flipped. I probably would, but we'll call here. I don't think small blinds gonna have a lot of pocket or two x here. I'm mostly just worried about like boats, basically. So that's a call, and then as played, I think pretty clear river bet if we're checked to. So small blind would be like ace two suited exactly or boats eight's full three is full as far as what hands are worried about pocket fives maybe if they got sticky on the turn but we see folds there king 10 open bet flop call over bet turn here All and then I think I'm gonna give up on this one, even though I don't have diamonds. I probably won't have an eight or a nine to bluff here. So even if I like say let's say I, say I had seven, eight, and river to seven, I would probably bluff jam. And then having two pair, we check and lose. Then fives here, check the nine four three. So bets here, call, ten turn check. Base turn bets mostly folding. Even block these one of draws. Uh river eight. And check river, trying to think if we check call or not. I'll have some 9x here that would check on the spade. So yeah, I'll probably fold fives then. Ooh, interesting to turn to a bluff actually. I didn't check raise. I could check raise any flush, I think. I'm not gonna check raise at all on the flop. Yeah, nah, I guess yeah. I guess I'd want to block like maybe like sevens be a bit better because it block like their exact hand. I like their check from them. I'm saying like if I had the sevens with a spade, because then I block some streets too. But anyways. So continue to fold a little bit. Uh, 299, 866, 200, and 217 in the stacks at the moment. So we got this one huge stack, about 150 bigs on the other table, and then 100 bigs on the other two. Now let's just hit the final table and end the tournament. Nice. What's uh, what's the buy-in and how much up top, Alan? What do we uh, plan for? And is it like a regular structure tournament? Is it PKO, mystery bounty? What's the, the tournament structure? Products and the spring tournaments are soon. So scoop actually just started today. Today's day one of it. So 
I'll be playing, it's a 18 day series, the 5th through the 22nd, I'll be playing the three Sundays. So 7th, 14th, and 21st. Evil Empire said, I haven't looked at the schedule yet, but just be playing no limit tournaments since I'm already a tournament fish. I'd <laughs> be punting if I play any of the other variants. That's how I feel. Punting even more, yeah, yeah. That's exactly how I feel. That's how I feel. Even PKOs are tough, man. Like, from a cash game background. Like, the no limit, like, regular terms, as long as I'm not playing the high rollers, I'm like, alright, at least I can hang a bit, I think. Still gonna be making some blunders and stuff, obviously, but, like, at least okay. But man, once I start playing PKOs or if I play any of the high roller tournaments, like, you know, once you start saying like 500 or higher, I just feel like I'm getting crushed. Like, especially PKOs. Aces on the button, big sack. Prodigy shoes coming through with the prime resub. Appreciate it for the two months. Sorry, I missed that a minute ago, but thank you for the prime resub. I do appreciate it. Good to see it coming in. Race deck aces there. 4 2, fold in this one. is in the big line let's go what was i saying 10k a week i mean it's been something like that it's been crazy absolutely insane week got a flips here raise up the big line get called go for the bet here seven five see the fold so the adjustment i've been making here is against these limps when i'm out of position and the small binder big blind is just like playing three quarters or check instead of using small sizes uh just against like players that are like limp calling so trying to build big pots a bit more often with them but nope, it's here. Threw at the King Jack's offsuit. And then let's see the call here. So we're going to go for small bet on the flop. Two block, King, Queen, and Queen Jack suited. They can have King, Queen, O in range here. Uh, probably doesn't have Queen Jack O in range though. Let's see the fold. Cut off limps here, raising up nines. Limp raises were crazy deep here. It's gonna call if we hit a nine. This would be awesome. No, queen 10-8. All right, check. They go for half pot. We'll call here if they got shot in a pair. 
Seven turn, turn the open ender. That's again. I think we're just gonna call again. Board pairs, river check. Snap checks, 10 2. Alright, so no good risk to 10, unfortunately. Alan playing a fifty dollar freeze out, fifteen hundred up top, and currently four of eight. Nice, keep us updated, Alan, on that. Hopefully, it gets more ladders all the way to the win. Check back here at the ace, three on the turn. That's just called King River. Not a very good river card. Flop checks through though, which makes me tempted to still call. But actually, consider some pretty tight folds. Uh, we're gonna make a tight river check. Chop on the base eight. Money be okay. Out of the tournament. Pocket jacks. Pesky jacks. Button opens here. Three red ace five suited. So we're about just under 150 bigs effective. See the call and look at that chat. The nuts. We even block what would be a straight flush draw five four with the five. Absolute beauty of a flop here. So we're pretty deep. And we're gonna go ahead and bet. Look at the small bet here. See the call. So I think when we're this deep, so usually I'd be playing like three quarters, but even if like pot doesn't really set up for advance here. So I'm actually gonna go small in this turn here as well. So it's kind of encounter too, but the deeper are some more small sizes here. Let me see this full though. Plop the open under here. So small mode opens we call. Check, check. Down here, check, check, flop. We bet turn calls. I'm going to try to check call the river. On the 10. And go to stays 5. Perfect. Back to jack 10 here. Um, I think we'll still call one more here. Ace on the river. A little worried. Bluffing won't too much when checked too, but we'll fold there. Button opens here through at 98 suit out of small blind. See the call. Uh, let's see. Flop the gutter. We go for half pot here. Turn the straight. Nice. So they'll have some ace king in range. We're definitely going to have more of it, though. But 9-8's feeling it pretty good, as long as I have king-9 suited. Or the low-frequency ace king here. Now we're opening as like a set or two pair. Uh, not a great river. Four-liner comes in. I'm actually going to turn this into a bluff catch here. And I think we'd probably have to call this, just because we check. We have a lot of folds here, so... King-jack of diamonds. Pain. All right. Call the straight off. Like I said, I think fine. I know we're kind of deep there, but we're folding that. We're gonna just be folding so often when we check. So I'll lose a huge pot there, unfortunately. Cuts the prop down to 779 today. Bit annoying spot for us, but hand kind of plays itself for them with the king jack, right? Call pre, call turn, flop, call turn, and then unfortunately the diamonds do us in on the river. It just becomes like such a good spot to bluff there if I check river, so. I think want to fold. Uh, I'm gonna block river here. Good with nines. Uh, 
Evil lunch, yeah. So it's just up to like the state regulation. I don't know if there's like what the deals with stars of uh, Nevada, but uh, a lot of states don't have like they haven't passed like state regulated online poker, whereas like Michigan, New Jersey, and PA have. There is king over here. So raise ace king, move on defense here. Queen six two. And go for small bet. And get check is drop the ace king. So open king queen, big line defense, check back here, two on the turn. Uh about half. I'm gonna go ahead and call one jack on the river. I think we have our bluff if they but it's over, but I'm not going to. Here if the king six suited, open pre get called, bat flop, check call turn, king with a flush draw, eight on the river. Uh, I don't love the clubs. Trying to think how much 8x they really have in this line though. Alright, we end up being good. It's a nice way to make sure I can have spades in range and then also some top pairs checking like a weak suited king there. I'm gonna go for the check raise over here. Bet's multi way with check raise. Pretty dry board. I have a few back. This is maybe a little loose, but we go for it. See the fold that time. Maybe a little afraid of over bluffing that if we use that, but. Worked out that time. Open flat, call Jack Seven suited here, checking nine seven four two clubs. And that's half here. Call. And then two on the turn, check turn. Or two pair. If they bet we'll just be calling straights come in, backdoor flush comes in. Slight over bet. I think versus this player from what I've seen, I still want to call this though. Jeez. Killing me. Alright. No good. No good, no good. A little bit scary when they go for that size, but again, like I've seen enough hands, I think we just need to call that pretty quick versus them.
open through ready seven suited, take it down. Take down 10 9 suited, Jack 9 suited up in here in the cutoff. Here's a Jack 9 suited. Dude, you said praying that Ontario gets unfenced soon. So what's going on with that? I was kind of curious. I some I think I don't know if it was you, Dude, or maybe somebody else was saying something the other day about this. Are they like voting on this, or it's like something that's I've I've not heard about other than through the chat. So I kind of curious how that's going. What's going on there? I think it's an appeal in the fall. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, so I need to maybe do some research on that because I probably should know at least what's out there publicly about it. But I have like no idea. King four over here. Opened three bat full tonight suited. I'm going to bluff a weak ace high on the turn here with the ace of spades, have a gut shot as well. And then I'm going to bluff the river too. Get snapped off, king seven, bluff no good. Is then suited next opening button. So 
Okay, signed Suda, big one defense here. 10, 9, 2, 3 hearts. We go for the small bet here. Check and turn five on the river. Uh, if we check two, I think we can call or bet. Sorry, if we face bet, as long as it's not a huge size, probably lean call. If we're just been bet flop, not like pumped about this, but we'll call it ace nine, lose ace ten. Suited. Opens, we three bet call. Ten three three. Bet flop, see the fold. Raising limper here, ten nine suited. Three back get called, or sorry, raise a limper get called. I do have a couple back doors here when they leave for pot will fall. So if they check, they'll probably go for big bet. Don't necessarily expect to get raised into on the ace king high board super often, so don't feel too bad about folding that. here so we bet all red back turn as well Flop bet turn. Um, I'm not sure I love this versus my opponent, but I'm going to go for it here. Going for the bluff. Triple barreling. Bold. So go bet, bet, bet here. Oh, get crazy and worse. I mean, we blocked the nuts, but I'm not going to do it. Bluff jam here. Bluff not working out. So I've come down from our high point. I think we got up to like what plus 1.2, 1.3 today. We're up about 600 now. A6 suited. So we defend big line. We're gonna have the most 2x, so I'd probably be check raising. Uh, Ace on the turn, we're just gonna check. And if we say spat, we'd just be check calling. So I get small bat call here. And not a good river card. Miss our spades, and the hearts come in. Now it's Jax, so we do chop with like ace 10. I think it might make a really tight fold for actually. This is pretty tight. Uh, if it's a low heart, I like it more. Yeah, no. 
All right, yeah, I'm gonna fold this here. I bet multi way on the turn, bet three quarters river. Maybe just needs to be a call, but because I guess there's enough chops. Yeah, I actually don't like the fold there. Now that I think about it, third turn, three quarters river. Yeah. All right. Obviously, don't love it being a heart. Not heart jack. We just snap it off there, but maybe still should have just called pretty quick there on that one. Raise ace four, get called here, bet in king nine eight, ace on the turn, check turn. Bet small, go ahead and call here, queen on the river check. Jack 10 comes in, two flush draws missed though. Let's see if they bet what size they use. I'm gonna get a little bit sticky here. I mean, it's a top pair, it's not that sticky, but we'll call. Missed the combo draw, ace four is good. Gutter and the hearts. Limp, raise the ace four, get called. Open ender, ace of hearts. I think it's a flop, we just check a ton. Interesting turn though. So turn, we're gonna bet turn. And I think bluff river, trying to get like a seven, six, or five to fold. And snapped off, king six for the two pair. All right, bluffing it off a little bit there, unfortunately. Sixes here. I don't hate that idea. I mean, maybe can we call properly if we just? I mean, I guess I'd have to see like size of these. If we think it's like really heavy, like aces, kings, queens. We have it's good implied odds, but we'll just fold. Check the queen nine suited, jack on the turn. And get to check turn, two river. Games river. I would fold a five there, only call six five. Anyways, go a seven here. Tomorrow. I'll be offline tomorrow, scoop on Sunday, off on Monday, and I think next week I'll be streaming Tuesday through Sunday with tournaments on Sunday, but cash for the rest of the week. I think will be the plan coming up here.
Check it six is down over here. Get her says hi. Perfect. Ooh, top two versus set. Who's getting paid? All right, guys, it is going to wrap it up. Really appreciate everyone being here. Uh, follow us all today, my, or plus 555, 41, sorry. So the lowest day of the week. Lost a bit from our high point, but still, obviously, another win today is great. So really appreciate everyone hanging out. Like I said, Scoop Sunday. Next cash game stream will probably be Tuesday, and we'll see you guys then.